Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee. <laughs> In any large concern, there's always a vast amount of correspondence which is whizzed about from one office to another. Most of it's sent in order to let other offices know that there are other offices. Admiralty send each other their share of waste paper, and it seems Sub-Lieutenant Phillips has copped more than his share aboard HMS Troutbridge. Morning, Mr. Phillips. What are you supposed to be doing? I, I thought it was time I dealt with some of the ship's correspondence. <coughs> it is time. Now, this is absolutely monstrous. What's been happening about our return? Uh, that's why I've got so much stuff to deal with now. <laughs> Most of this lot is Leslie's returns. Returned. <laughs> Here, let's see. Hmm. Please clarify. Incorrect form. Should only be answered by battleships and above. <laughs> this return discontinued since 1918. <laughs> Nothing today, thank you. Yes, you certainly seem to have been a model of business efficiency, Mr. Phillips. Well, it's also jolly confusing, sir. I mean, why do we have to fill up so many forms? Why don't they ask us to fill just one form a year that says, yes, we're all here and we want food and wallop? <laughs> well, don't be ridiculous. Anything else in your little collection I ought to know about? Well, th there's an Admiralty fleet order that could get jolly nasty, sir. Uh, there are very few AFOs that couldn't. What's this one? Uh, here you are, sir. Consequent upon the urgent need for reduction of manpower, it has been decided that all commanding officers should list all possible redundant commissioned personnel forthwith, and all petty officers and all ratings in excess of immediate requirements. Jolly nasty, hmm? Jolly nasty indeed. Well, the Navy was a good life while it lasted, I suppose. No comment. It... <laughs> this is very serious. I mean, if they do chuck us out, what are we going to do? Goodness knows. I mean, I'm just not cut out for civilian life. Yeah. You're not cut out for service life either. <laughs> yeah, perhaps I'd better have a word with Pertwee, see if he can suggest anything. Ship stores here. Abel Seaman Johnson chatting. <laughs> And if you want the chief, he's in conference. Who with? Me. <laughs> Ooh, is that number one speaking? It is, Johnson. Oh, I think the conference is over. <laughs> Meeting declared closed. ER chief, it's number one. You thick-headed, dozy dumpling. <laughs> what do you want to tell old busybody I was here for? Hello, sir, and nice to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. I'd ring you more frequently, but you know what a busy body I am. Oh, we do indeed, sir, and it's just that... Good morning, wrong number. Uh, Chief, come up here at once, will you? Aye, aye, busy body. No. Oh, I wish I was dead. I often wondered what it was he called me. Uh, Pertwee's coming up, Mr. Phillips. Oh, good show, busy body. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I, I've been um, I, I've been busy while whilst you were on the blower, sir, and I, I think this form might well be the answer. What is it? Well, sir, it says that applications are invited from personnel wishing to undergo a civilian adjustment course at St. John's Wood, London. Civilian adjustment? Oh, that must be one of those efforts that, where they teach you a trade. That's it, sir. Yes. How to demand a tea break. <laughs> When to go on strike and all that carry on? Carry on, that's an idea. Have you ever thought of going into films, Mr. Phillips? No, not likely, sir. No, sir. Why? Well, it's just a thought. There's a chap in those carry on films who looks as gormless as you do sometimes. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Not at all. Pleasure. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, I do, Chief. Mr. Phillips, show him that AFO. Aye, 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 sir. Uh, here you are, Chief. Have a butcher's at that. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, Consecu you in upon the urgent need for reduction of manpower. It has been decided that all CUs should list all possible redundant commissioned personnel forthwith. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh, what 
a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Trust Pertwee to take it to heart. <laughs> Loyal to a fault, this one. Yeah, quite. Uh, chief. <laughs> 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 Sir, now read on. Aye? <laughs> yeah, yeah, read on, yeah. Fourth week. And all petty officers and ratings in excess of immediate requirements... It's a carve-up, that's what it is! <laughs> it's a dirty, diabolical carve-up! They, 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 you've got to stop them. You've got to stop them, sir, please. It's no laughing matter. If old Thundergut sees this, he'll have us thrown out into the cruel, cruel world by the end of the week, sir. Oh, do you think it'll take as long as that? You, be you better have a look at this thing as well, Chief. This one is about volunteers for a civilian adjustment course. There's something else, sir. I've been working it out. And if we put our names down for this course thing, and they accept us, then we know for certain we're being pushed out. On the other hand, on the other hand, if they don't accept us, we we'll know old Thunderguts hasn't listed us as redundant after all. Own me! <laughs> Good gracious. Now, what's the matter? All that long bit of talking? Well, what about it? It made sense, sir. <laughs> You've never worked out anything as complicated as that and got it right before. Your deduction was completely logical. Lummy, say it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chavs, it's at a time like this that a chap feels jolly proud of a chap. Yes, it's worth a medal or two at least, sir. <clears throat> no, better than that. We'll even do what he suggests. We'll all apply for this adjustment course and see what happens. Fancy that. It made sense. I can't get over it. By Leslie, chappy is a clever George. <laughs> I mean, by chap, George is a clever Leslie. Oh, yeah. blimey. Blimey, here we are. Back to normal. <laughs> Captain Purvey's office. Yes, yes, it's the one. Yes, he's the one I was after. Yes, yes, yes. Capital, capital. Yes, yes. Who's calling, sir? Uh, nobody this end. I must be your end. Yes. <laughs> uh, Rear Admiral Ironbridge. Yes, put Povey on, will you? It's Rear Admiral Ironbridge, sir. Oh, good grief. That'll be another hour. Of... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Povey's the chap. <laughs> Yes, put him on, yes. Hello, the Rear Admiral Arnbridge. No, no, you can't be. I am. <laughs> I didn't mean I meant... No, this is Captain Povey here, sir. Oh, capital, capital. Ah, now, Povey, yes. Why aren't you on it? On it? On what, sir? Why, this course, of course. Course, of course? What course, of course? <laughs> Sent a memo. Yes, that's what you did, yes. Civilian Adjustment Course. Yes, that's the one. Oh, that course. Oh, well, there, there must be some mistakes. And I, I'm not considering civilian life for years yet. For I, I'm a comparatively young man. I, I'm only just over 30. <laughs> <laughs> I do beg your pardon. <laughs> I'll speak to you later. No, no, not later. Now. <laughs> Calls cost money, you know. No. Um, I mean, yes. Yes. Uh, Povey, you've got it all wrong. This isn't an adjustment course for civilian life. It's a course run by civilians. Yes, medical tests to see if men can adjust themselves to any climate. Yes, yes, or emergency. Yes, yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Medical fitness, mental reaction, and all that sort of thing. Oh, if I'd known that, I'd have gone myself. Naturally, I, I don't want to burst, but I should probably have passed all the tests with flying colors. Yes, yes, yes. Well... If you don't want to go, that's all there is to it. Now then, can you send somebody else? I already have, sir. <laughs> Some of the crew of Troutbridge are on their way there now. Oh, splendid, splendid. Nice to have heard from you. Must go now. Tea up, you know. Yes, uh, goodbye. Hello, hello. What on earth was all that about? Excuse me, sir, you haven't dealt with the AFO about redundancy yet. Redundancy? Oh, that was, well, you can deal with that one yourself, surely. But I must have the names of any officers or men who are redundant in your command, sir. There aren't any. None at all? None. Ren Cornwall, I was not born yesterday. 
If I give Admiralty the name of so much as one man they can get rid of, it'll start an investigation. Yes, sir. And the next thing is that Captain Povey will be redundant, and I'm not having that. Now, you send him a return mark, nil, Rand Cornwall, a nil return. Well, no sense in standing out here looking like the chorus from HMS Pinafore, gentlemen. <laughs> May as well go in and get the course started. All right, mate. All right, mate. Who'd have thought it? Hey, who'd, who, who'd have thought old Thundercats would do it? Hey, Mr. Pinafore, I'd, I'd, throwing us all on the scrap heap of life in our frame. Look, after all we've done for him, after all, we, we, together, us three, all we've done for him, he bites the mitt that shoves the grub in his mush. <laughs> Never in the field of human yeah, conflict. Yeah, yeah, all right. I, I think we've had all we wanted that on the way here. Thank you. I say. <laughs> I just thought of something. <laughs> it would serve him right. Yeah, no, no, Mr. Phillips, sir. If this little thing of yours is anything like the last one, we don't want to hear it. No, no, the point is that old Thunderguts has dropped a shocking clangour. Yes. <laughs> now that he's told Admiralty we're redundant, they'll probably think he is as well. <laughs> yes, of course. Fancy is not thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pensioned off in the care of Mrs. Povey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the best of British luck to him. <laughs> oh, I feel much better about things now. Come on, let's get in. Right. Uh, yes? Oh, um, we've been asked to report here from Portsmouth. One moment, please, gentlemen. By all beads. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean uh, take a time. Uh, time. <laughs> yes? Yeah, some noble gentlemen have arrived. Oh, just coming. I say, you've got a shocking cold, haven't you? Yes, but I'm used to it. Well, you get a lot of them. No, same one all the time. <laughs> it's because I have to sit in that draught from that flaming door every day. <gasps> Stone me! If that was a blast off, why didn't nobody do the countdown? <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. You'll be from Trout Bridge, I presume? Trout Bridge, actually? Yes. Well, not being in the Navy myself, I wouldn't know about these things. Well, if you'll just follow me, I'll take you along to Dr. Charles. Lummy. In here, please. That's the style. Now, if you'll all just strip off, I'll just... <laughs> I'll just toddle off and tell the doctor you're here. Shan't be long. Uh, no, 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 wait. Uh, uh, come back. Not come, what's uh, the matter? Uh, well, uh, well, it's, uh, it's just that I... Well, he said I... I, I, I mean, I don't... I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we shouldn't be... I, I mean, it's not, it's not right. I, I, I demand a scream. <laughs> They've no right. I, I'm not... I'm not... Uh, <laughs> oh, I know what it is, number one, sir. Oh, Mr. Phillips... <laughs> Mr. Phillips, sir, uh, you're modest. Well, <laughs> why not? Oh, go on, sir. Hop out of your unmentionables. We're all standing in a triangle with our backs to each other. Oh, all right. <laughs> but no peeping. <laughs> no peeping over the shoulders, either of you. Oh, for heaven's sake, hurry up! Well, I'm being as quick as I can. <laughs> They're in here, Doctor. Good morning, gentlemen. Yeah! <laughs> right, everybody behind everybody else. <laughs> here, the one in the front gets the goose pimples. <laughs> right, Scott, what are you supposed to be, the three graces? actually expect it. Yes, all right, all right. Don't waste any more time. I'll examine you first, skinny ribs. <laughs> Who? You, of course. Now, stethoscope, please, Arthur. Y here you are, Doctor. Right. Now, let's see. Ah! <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> well, straight up in the air to begin with. And now I think he's under the couch, miss. Uh, madam, sir. <laughs> oh, well, come on. Out of there. Not likely. Not until you warm the end of that thing. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Try and keep 
Thank you a minute. I'll just take the chill off on this one. Oh! Oh! Breathe in. Are you kidding? I breathed in all the puff I could when you jammed that thing on me. I see. Well, breathe out. <laughs> and again. I can't. <laughs> That's all there was. <laughs> <laughs> right, fine. Cough. Hey. <laughs> Cough. Oh, right out. <coughs> 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 I'll have to get some linctus made up for that. <laughs> I'll examine the rest of you later. Get dressed and follow the orderly as quick as you can. This is a specialised course, and the first thing is um, what we call the mystery room. Now, the idea is there's something strange about this room, and it's up to you to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah, possibly, Doctor, but I don't quite see how this is going to help us with our future careers. On the contrary, your whole future careers may depend on how you cope with the various tests we've designed for you. Uh, if you're all set, gentlemen, perhaps you'd be good enough to follow me. For one moment, before you leave, put on these blindfolds. Now, you can take them off as soon as you've entered the room and we've left you. And, um, good luck. Right. All blacked out, chaps. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, no, sir. It should be worn higher. <laughs> it's supposed to be a blindfold, not a gag. <laughs> oh, thanks. Right. Now, hang on to each other and I'll lead the way. Right, hang on to me, Mr. Phillips. Mm -hmm. okay. Careful. <laughs> Easy does it. Right. <laughs> Round you go. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, wait, 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 wait a minute. What's that I've got there? <laughs> Straight ahead, that's it. Bye bye. <laughs> Yes, Chief, we are. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, take the blindfolds off. You, right. you know, this is a jolly odd course. Hmm. It's obviously one of these psychological efforts. They'll, they'll examine what we do under various circumstances and decide what jobs we'll be best suited for. For walls, ceiling, no windows, but light bulb, solid floor and... Uh, solid floor and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? I... <laughs> Where's the way out? There's no door. Lama, he's right. He, he's right. It's all walls. But it can't be. <laughs> we must have made a mistake. The door must be over. The... No, no. Where? Uh, uh, there, it's, it's, it's on that wall. Uh, Where? Uh, 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 of course, they might. Uh, that's odd. It's, 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 what are you talking it's about? It's not, then. There must be, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They've forgotten it. <laughs> Can't have done. We came in here. It must be possible to get out again. If you're right, where is the perishing door? There's no knob. There's no handle, no inches, no nothing. No, 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 don't, don't, don't panic. We know there's a way out somewhere. All we've got to do is to find it. Yeah. Obviously, that's the problem we have to solve. I know, yes, I know. I've got it. Take cover, lads. Mr. Phillips is having a think again. <laughs> No, it's perfectly simple. There, there must be a door in here somewhere. So if there's no handle, it must operate on one of those beam things. What? Infrared, you mean? Do I? Yeah, oh yes, they like it, yes. <laughs> I, no, I meant one of those things where all you have to do is to walk up to it and it opens on its own. Yeah, that, yeah that's possible. I think I'll try this wall first, uh, just as a matter of principle. Now, if I'm right, yeah. all one has to do is to walk smartly towards the wall like this. And the beam will open the invisible door at the last possible... Oh, God. <laughs> right, he was wrong. <laughs> Try this wall. Hang on a minute, I think my head's in orbit. <laughs> right, left hand down a bit, Mr. Phillips, sir, and straight ahead it is. Well, if you're absolutely certain that... Cool. <laughs> right in the hooter. I feel all of a... <laughs> well, only two more to go. Right hand up and straight ahead. Left, right, left, right, left, right. There you go. Left, right. There you go. <laughs> Andridge! Andridge, you old 
old fool, where are you? Oh, Lord. Sorry about this, Medivale, old man. Yes, yes, Admiral Balling for me. Oi, oi. Anyone seen that old fool, Ironbridge? Yes, yes, here I am. Oh, never mind. Don't worry, I'll find him sooner or later. Oh, allow me, Ironbridge, I'm used to him. This is the rear Admiral Ironbridge, Admiral. Rear Admiral Ironbridge, Admiral. There's no such rank. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Oh, you're him. <laughs> By God, Puss, that was quick. I told you I'd find him. Ironbridge? Ironbridge? You're a steaming nit. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, uh, that's me. Yes. Uh, pardon? This adjustment course of St. John's Wood. I've seen the memo thing you sent out, and you've got the blasted thing all wrong. Look, you've got to get that lot from Troutbridge out of there at once. Yes. What? But they've only been there a day. Why, they found their way out of the doorless room. Yes, yes. And then they got the tropical heat treatment. Yes, yes. And good luck to them. Yes. Then they were thrown into the swimming pool. Yes, yes. They were doing splendidly. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. Oh, do leave off. <laughs> Admiral's talking. And when we fixed this course up with those Harley Street weirdies, I said it was only for captains and above. Now you've filled the place up with a load of subs and chief petty officers. Well, sir, I... That's no excuse. Here I am with a captain I want to send on the course, and I can't get the idiot in because the place is full of other idiots. Now, get them out of there. Get the reports from the doctor, and if they're all still breathing, go down there and see them yourself. Now, what's the time now? 11.32, sir. Good show. They're open. Right, carry on. <laughs> Gangway, Admiral's going through. Oh, do get out of my way. I haven't got time to fall over idiots like you. <laughs> Gentlemen, you're doing splendidly. Never mind how we're doing. I'm nearly done. It's all right for you. Yeah. It's all right for you standing there in your white coat looking hygienic. But flesh and blood can stand so much. And Pertwee's clean out of flesh and blood. <laughs> yeah. The blood went yesterday and the flesh had it this morning. Nonsense, you're in cracking form. Now that's the door you want over there. Lummy, she's dead right. It says exit. <laughs> this way, chaps. Uh, keep going, gentlemen. We'll make it yet. You know, Doctor, I've always reckoned that it, as it was the last test of this course, it's a bit of a dirty trick labelling the door of the refrigeration room exit. <laughs> yes, possibly, Arthur, but if I told them the next test was a cold treatment, they'd never take it. Excuse me, madam. It's real admirable bridge to see you. Yep, uh, yep, uh, yep. Uh, I mean, yes, yes. Uh, that's me. <clears throat> Dreadful clangor. Must release chaps from Cloutbridge at once. Yes, yes. Oh, but they've nearly finished the course. Can't be helped. No, 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 no. Um, no. You're too kind. <laughs> they should never have been on the course in the first place. But you're wrong. One of them is the ideal man. Personifies all the Navy stands for. In fact, up to now, he stood for everything. Can't be helped. But, Admiral, you can't do this. I mean, out of that bunch from Trout, there's one who's completely unaffected by climate. Really? Yes, yes. Um, yes. Do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. But you see, this man went through the tropical heat treatment without taking his clothes off. Now, the other two did, but he didn't. In the swimming bath, two of them took their clothes off and dived into the icy waters. But he dived in fully dressed. Yes, and I'll tell you something else. I've just looked through the spy hole of the refrigeration room, and the others have got their greatcoats on, but he hasn't. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, even when I inoculated him, he wouldn't take his coat off. I had to do it through his jacket. <laughs> capital! Capital! Now, what was that? The abominable snowman. Let him out, Arthur. I see Get your lovely ices here! <laughs> of all the dirty tricks... It's a good job you're a civilian, madam. In, in fact, it's a good job you're a madam, madam. <laughs> Otherwise, I should complain to Admiralty about this treatment. It must have been 20 below in there. <laughs> 30 below, actually. <laughs> Hello, you chaps. <laughs> it's jolly nippy in there. That's the one. Look, he hasn't even put his greatcoat on in the cold room. Well, I very nearly did. I mean, ever since that medical you gave me, <laughs> I've had three uniforms on. <laughs> Chap can't be too careful, you know. Brilliant, you see, brilliant. There's initiative for you. Oh, I do see what you mean. Yes, yes, see what you mean. No alternative. Yes, promotion, the only thing. What? Promotion? No, your degree. Congratulations, Lieutenant Phillips. Lieutenant Phillips? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got two of them. Uh, sir, now that I've thawed out... Oh, he thought he thawed a Lieutenant Puddytat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no... 
I was about to say that I can't understand what Sub-Lieutenant Phillips has done to deserve promotion. Well, I should have thought that was painfully obvious. He showed no reaction to any of our tests whatsoever. A hardy type, that one. Yes, a caveman, if I ever saw one. What's she talking about? <laughs> I've been frozen and boiled. But when doctors turn out to be ladies, Leslie's like a potato. He likes to keep his jacket on. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, shut up. Or your promotion will go straight down the drain with the peeling. Excuse me, madam. Yes? A Captain Hervey has arrived. Oh, sorry to interrupt your course, gentlemen. Mm, Admiral's mistake. Only meant for captains and above. You're to report back to Portsmouth immediately. You do understand. Yes, we understand, all right, sir. But what are you doing here? Well, I'm on the course. Admiralty are picking out the cream of the service. Well, they've got the clot. You yeah, what set? <laughs> What was that, Sub-Lieutenant Phillips? Uh, no, Lieutenant Phillips now, sir. Les has been promoted. Promoted? What idiot promoted this fool? Yes, yes! <laughs> I am the idiot. Oh. <laughs> well, long overdue, sir. Uh, yes. It would seem that even if we didn't complete the course, sir, Mr. Phillips got his promotion through it. Of course, if you don't want to take it. Promotion? Oh, oh, well, naturally, I, I, I want to take the course. <laughs> what do I have to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 gentlemen, please. Before you report back to your, your ship, surely you can. Yes, just... well, all right, I'll tell you, sir. Now, first of all, you get the room with the no door hole. Room with the no door hole. <laughs> then the hot treatment. But, but I can't stand heat. You will. Strip off! What? <laughs> Do you mind? There are gentlemen present. Yes. Yeah, then you get then you get the wet treatment, sir. I'll hold your jacket, sir. And then the cold treatment. Give us your hat. Then the injections. And watch where they put the needle. It can get very nasty. Yes. Oh, look! He's got long comms on. <laughs> See you when you get back, sir. If you get back. <laughs> And that was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, the doctor was Heather Chasen, the receptionist was Judy Cornwell, Rear Admiral Ironbridge was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, and the Admiral was played by Terniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> Automation is creeping in everywhere. Even in the home, one has things that wash up all the dishes, they switch on the fires at certain times, make the tea for you in the morning and so on. Well, my wife's had a thing that does all this lot for years, me. It's true. It's nothing to laugh at. John Snag was on at me again this morning about my dishpan hands. However, <laughs> Admiralty are about to be in even more trouble when automation comes to their records office, as the crew of Troutbridge find out. Uh, come in. Lieutenant Phillips is in residence. <laughs> oh, good morning, sir. I just popped in to see this. Shun? Oh, what do you talk? What do you mean, shun? Oh, no, 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 Mr. Phillips, sir. It's me. <laughs> CPO Pertwee, sir. <laughs> of course, if you need glasses, a certain relative of mine is well up in the optical, sir. <laughs> I'm perfectly well aware who it is, thank you, Chief. But you ought to know the regulations. You must stand to attention when addressing a superior officer. But I've never stood to attention. Never mind what you've never. <laughs> Leslie's a lieutenant now, you know. <laughs> yes, sir, I had noticed, sir. Yeah. Your new gold sleeve ring blinded me when I opened the doors. <laughs> it's very nice, isn't it? Lovely. Mm. <laughs> Do it glow in the dark, sir? <laughs> well, I, I don't know, actually. I haven't had the uniform long enough to... Uh... <laughs> now then, what did you want to see Lieutenant Phillips about? 
Stone me. He's drunk with power. <laughs> yeah, the right one he's going to be. What was that? What? Uh, I said, uh, your rank will empower you to right wrongs when we go to sea, sir. <laughs> Did you? Well, a chap does his best for the chaps, you know. I haven't forgotten the period when I was a sub-lieutenant. Well, there's hardly been time, has there, sir? It's only last week. Oh, Mr. Phillips, I understand. Room, room, shan't. I beg your pardon. He's got a nasty attack of the promotion, sir. Silence, Pertwee. Right. Chief petty officers must be heen and not stirred. <laughs> no, no, I mean weaned and not stirred. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, I think I get the idea. I see you've got your new uniform, Mr. Phillips. Well, naturally, sir. I mean, when a, when a chap's an officer chap, he can't be improperly dressed. <laughs> Bad for the men, you know. Yeah, oh, quite, yes. Tell me, does that new gold sleeve ring glow in the dark? <laughs> no, it blooming well doesn't. Oh, pity. Perhaps Mr. Bates could fix you up with a battery and some fairy lights for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, all right, Chief. Now, what was it you wanted to see Lieutenant Phillips about, Chief? It's a signal about that very thing, sir, your promotion. What, what, what? They, they hadn't had second thoughts, have they? Uh, no, sir, no. But Admiralty have sent a little card down for you to fill up for records office, sir. Card? They've never done anything like that before. No, no, it's a new system, sir. Automation, it's called. Automation. That's it, yes. That's what it is. It's all, all serving men and now going to be indexed in a machine called uh, Fred Computer Calls. <laughs> Call who? Uh, Fred Computer Calls. <laughs> oh, a computer. Yeah, very like me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the same sort of thing as they use for the uh, premium minimum 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 bonds. Uh, only that one's called Ernie, and this one's his brother, Fred. <laughs> computer Calls. Good gracious. Is um, that the card from Fred Computer Course you have there? That's all right, sir. Yeah. Only I reckon uh, somebody let the moth get at it. <laughs> it's full of tiny, tiny little holes. Lummy, so it is. Honestly, you think they'd be more careful, wouldn't you? <laughs> Mr. Phillips, those tiny, tiny holes are there for a purpose. It's through them that Fred Computer Course sorts out the correct answers. Really? My word, it's a funny old world we live in, isn't it, really? I mean, you think the answers would fall through those tiny, tiny holes? <laughs> I mean, they're likely to jam up the works, aren't they? Yeah, well, perhaps we'd better settle for filling up the card instead of trying to explain it. Um, what's it say, Chief? Uh, right, sir. Now, uh, question number one, sir. Name and rank. Well, really, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, fancy them buying a machine to find that out. I knew it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> They're potty. <laughs> now, where's my pen? <clears throat> oh, that's it. Uh, Lieutenant Phillips. At last. L E R T E double N. Yes. Uh, well, perhaps it might be safer if I filled it in for you. Well, Mr. Phillips, sir. Uh... Lieutenant doesn't begin with an L E R T E double N. No? No, no sir. No. It starts L E F T E double N. <laughs> you know, if you do go on much longer, I shan't be able to work out how you do spell it. Nothing. Next is um, education. I suppose the correct answer is lots, but it didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right, sir. In one ink, well, out the other. Now, that'll be quite enough of that, Chief Petty Officer Perpy. In fact, you can jolly well shun again. Sir, permission to leave from where I know I'm not wanted. Um, yes, uh, where does this card have to go to now? Uh, back to Fred Computer Calls for our Captain Povey's office. Right, well, it's completed now, so you better take it over to the office straight away. Very good, sir. Well, that depends. Are you alone, or is Captain Bly with you? Now, Lieutenant Phillips is still aboard the bounty. <laughs> if you look out the window, you'll probably see his girl braid flashing in the sun. Chief, have you given 
him that card for the computer in records office, yes? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he filled it in. Oh, well, I'm jolly glad to hear it. The sooner that goes back to records, the sooner his pay increase will come through. Yeah, right, oh, here it is. I've got it here in my pocket. Mm. It's in my pocket. It must be in me. In me other one. Hold on. It will be in a minute. <laughs> I've lost the perisher. <laughs> you can't have done. Oh, yes, I can. And what's more, than I have. Well, I suppose one shouldn't be surprised, considering the size of some of the Admiralty property you've, um, mislaid. A tiny card never stood a chance. Yeah, but that other stuff was different. Uh, that lot was floggable. Who'd buy a tiny, tiny card with a lot of little earls in it, eh? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, don't be rotten when John's is in the muck. Come on, give us another card and I'll fill it in again. We haven't got any. Haven't got any? Well, but you must have. Oh, but if I tell Mr. Phillips I've, I've lost his record card, he'll bung me straight in the rattle. Well, the only ones we have are made out by a couple of other officers who were promoted last week. Fair enough. Give us one of them and a plain postcard. I'll make one. But you can't do that. What about all those little hoos? Oh, a nifty bit of haphazard jabbing with one of your hair clips should solve that little problem. <laughs> It'll never work in the computer, you know. Who cares? Fred Computer Calls can look after himself. As long as a card for Mr. Phillips left here... John's is in the clear. Well, yeah, I mean, anything, anything might have happened to it once it got to records office. Come on, come on. Give me a postcard so I can get Whittle in. Go on, Taffy, lend fat so a shilling. No. Uh, you're rotten. That's what you are. You're a rotten old Welsh rotten. I wouldn't be skint if I hadn't paid for all your wallop last night. If you mismanage your financial arrangements, it's hardly my affair, is it? Well, sixpence, then. No. My great-grandfather Di always said, neither a lender nor a borrower be. Funny him say anything like that, really. Why? He was a pawnbroker. <laughs> well, threepence, then. Three little copper coins of the round. No. Well, watch it. Here comes duty officer. Oh, blimey, it's Lieutenant Glow Arms again and all. <laughs> Right, men, carry on. Oh, yo, sir. Uh, you know, Johnson, we'll have to put you on a diet, eh? Well, a chap's in the service, a chap owes it to the service to be absolutely fit in first-class condition. Yes, sir. Oh, we'll start tomorrow, sir. No, Johnson, today, today. You know the old saying? Yes, sir. Neither a lender nor a borrower be. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Who knows? One day you may get the promotion like I did. Ah, ah, ah. That was something I wanted to chat to you about, sir. Not my promotion? No, sir, mine. When is Abel Seaman Goldstein going to be lead in Seaman Goldstein? Uh, it's all in the luck of the game, Goldstein. Some of us get promotion, some of us don't. Mm, I noticed that. I merely want to point out, sir, that some of the some of us who do get it haven't been waiting for it as long as some of the some of us who don't. And some of the some of us who do are sad lieutenants and not Abel Seaman when they were waiting anyway. To which some of the some of us who do can only say, hard luck. <laughs> I knew it. One law for the rich, one law for the able seaman. Put upon something cruel, just because I'm a foreigner, that's what it is. You wait until we get home rule, sir. There won't, there won't be any able seaman in the Welsh Navy. We'll all be sub-lieutenants, too. Mr. Phillips, uh, Mr. Phillips. Uh, uh, yes, uh, sorry, pardon. Um, uh, ratings, ratings. Shut! Uh, Lieutenant Phillips reporting... Oh, do uh, leave off. There isn't time to change the guard at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> now, what's happened, sir? Well, as your duty officer, I thought you might care to know that Captain Povey's aboard and looking for you. What? Oh, lummy, lummy. He's my straight-on cap. Uh, uh, I mean... Uh, is... Duty officer! Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, I mean, here, here, sir. Oh, there you are. Where on earth have you been? I've got an urgent signal from records office about you. <laughs> Not bad news, I trust, sir. <laughs> oh, sir, I am still a lieutenant, aren't I? No, Mr. Phillips, you are not. Lummy, that didn't last long. <laughs> oh, I don't know, very nearly a week. Not bad going, considering it was you. <laughs> Watch it, number one. I said he wasn't a lieutenant any longer. <laughs> Quite, sir. He is, however, as from now. A lieutenant commander. <laughs> oh, well, it's rather a... A what? <laughs> Records office must be stark raving mad, but here's the signal. He's confirmed as a lieutenant commander. Uh, excuse me, sir. I think the shock is proving too much. Miss Phillips. Leslie. Um, Les. I mean, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's happened. And of all the... Would you... I mean, I can't think. I mean, fancy them, honestly. Of all... I never thought I'd... Mean, I mean, I, how could I... <laughs> oh, bully for Fred Computicles. It must be some mistake, of course. Oh, quite, sir. Nobody gets promoted as fast as that. Obviously an error somewhere. I don't see that. Oh, no. Admiralty know what they're doing, all right? They know a good man when they can see one. You can't wool the pull over their eyes. <laughs> Possibly we can't, um, sir, but Fred Computicle seems to be doing so. Oh, no, he is not. Right, number one. Take over duty, officer, will you? What? Hmm. Oh, oh, well, yes, I suppose so, uh, sir. That's the style. I must go ashore for a bit to see my tailor. You understand? Chap can't be improperly dressed when a chap's a lieutenant commander. We senior officers have our responsibilities, you know. Yes. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, we senior officers do. And as a captain, I intend to make it my responsibility, as a more senior officer, to see what the blazes has happened at Admiralty Records. <laughs> Jason, I, I've just seen this fool Phillips and told him he's a lieutenant commander. So now get me admiralty, will you? Aye, sir, but perhaps you'd better see Lieutenant Commander Phillips again first. See him again? No, thank you. Once a day is quite sufficient. What, what do I want to see him again for? Well, you're not going to like this one tiny bit, sir. Oh, Ben Chasen, I do not like riddles. What's happened? Another signal from records correcting the last signal. Lieutenant Commander Phillips is now Captain Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I knew they'd soon sort that... Captain? We can't be. But that means we're the same rank. This is ludicrous. Excuse me, sir. Your call to Admiralty. Right. I'll take it in my office. Hello. Captain Povey here. Yeah? One moment, sir. Rear Admiral Lionbridge is dealing with the matter. <laughs> Putting you through now, sir. Oh, Lloyd would have to be here. Yes, yes. It would, wouldn't it? Yes. Lionbridge here. Yes, yes. Um... Oh, yes. Hello. Uh, Captain Povey, yes, sir. I want to make some inquiries about records office. Oh, do you really? Yes. Well, I'm your man. Yes. Taking them over, you know, yes. Didn't want them, but I copped them all right. Yes, yes. Fascinating, yes. Uh, yes, quite, sir. Now, it's... It's this uh, new machine thing. Yes, yes. Machine. Yes. Sing. Yes. That's what did it. Uh, old engineering man, you know. Yes, 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 That's my branch. Yes. So I was a sitting duck to get lumbered with this computer thing. My word, it's a size. Yes. It must be about at least, um, oh, yes, easily. <laughs> Most interesting, sir, but, but I think it's gone wrong. No, no, impossible, no. It's still under guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> but it keeps promoting the same man, sir. Maybe it's made Sub-Lieutenant Phillips a captain in just over a week. Ah, awkward act, yes. Must be right, though. Ah, all controlled by the little holes in the cards, you know. Absolutely infallible, yes. It said so in the advert before their lordships bought it. Huh? <laughs> but it can't be right, sir. For one thing, we've no vacancy for a captain down here. And for another, what about Troutbridge? He, he can't be navigating officer now. Ah, uh -huh. tricky that. Yes. Tell you what, we'll draft him up here somewhere, and I'll send you a new navigating officer for Troutbridge. Yes, not to worry. I'll have a lieutenant down to you tomorrow. Love to the wife. Yes, bye. No, no, wait. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> You know, you know, number one said it, you just don't seem the same without Mr. Phillips aboard. No. Still, we could hardly have had him as our navigating officer now that he's a vice admiral, could we? <laughs> vice admiral? Mr. Phillips? Stone me. About three more and he's got bingo. <laughs> Yes. But I have a feeling it can't go on much longer. I gather from Captain Povey that it's a um, mechanical fault in Fred Computicles that's doing it. Ah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. You, you, you can't trust machines like you can an honest working man, sir. No. I mean, I mean what's, what's the good of throwing good men and true onto the rubbish tip of life when you, when you end up with a machine with no art and no loyalty to the flag and no British oak in its history? Hey! What's the good? I mean, uh, look, unlike the ratings it's replaced. 
He don't have undaunted devotion to duty in the face of the teeming odds. Oh, turn it in. Besides, it may not be a fault in the machine itself. Oh, well, it must be so. Mr. Phillips, a vice admiral. I mean, it must have got a screw loose. Well, the theory at Rear Admiral Ambridge's office is that the only way something like this could happen in error was if there was something wrong with Mr. Phillips's card. You know, it might have got bent or got a hole punched it in the wrong place. Hmm? Yes, well... <laughs> yes, well, that's... Uh... Well, you... It's not very likely, is it? So... No... <laughs> I say, what a laugh if it was that. A <laughs> 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 right comical, I'm sure. And I, I think I want it somewhere else, dead urgent. Sir. Oh, uh, good gracious, so am I. I just remember, the new navigating officer's aboard and waiting to see me in my office. Uh, come out to my cabin and meet him in a few minutes. Oh, I said, I'll, I'll be there in about, about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Johnson. Yes, sir. Is the new officer in my cabin? Oh, say he is, sir. <laughs> well, you, you found the way all right. Well, not exactly, no. He already knew it, sir. <laughs> Stop doing that. I may have a word with you later. All right. I'm most frightfully sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, not at all. Grand morning, isn't it? Good heavens, Lieutenant Price. Morning. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, the same. The faintly inferior copper coinage has returned, I fear, uh, this time as navigating officer. Oh, well, this is a bit tricky. Mm. I mean, you were the number one before me, so... Oh, my dear chap, think nothing of it. As a navigating officer, I should be able to sleep at night. As the number one, I never could. I used to lie in my cabin wondering what fast one Pertwee was pulling on me that I hadn't spotted yet. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. After the first year, I found aspirin helped. Mm. After the second, they didn't. <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't consider... No, 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 I wouldn't. Not for all the tea, they seem to be continuously sloshing back in China. <laughs> you know, Pertwee's pace when he sees your back ought to be pretty good. I wish I had a camera. Mm. On the other hand, if I took a picture of him, I doubt that there's a chemist in the country that would develop it. <laughs> He is still his commercially industrious self, I presume? Yeah, oh, more so. Come in. Uh, you asked me to come back and have an eye you. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> he is, indeed. Tell me, that's torn it. What's bothering you, Chief? Well, sir, I take it with uh, Mr. Price back, the unit... Comfort Fund will be back as well, sir. Yes, very possibly, Chief. If my memory serves me correctly, it usually does, uh, there was quite a considerable amount of lolly in that account when I left. Uh, yes, well, yeah, well, yeah, but yes. Yeah, well, I mean, that, well, yes. Yeah, well, we did, well, we did, we did, we did. Yes, well, we, with the cost of living going up all the time, sir, I mean, certain illegitimate expenses. <laughs> Yeah, uh, ping pong balls don't last forever, sir, you know. And uh, I'm sure you'll be the first to agree there. So there's the crooked mallets and all uh, the mallets with the, the unseasoned wood can play havoc, you know. With In all, short, but I'd say he's had the lot. Uh, quite. Now, tell me, Stephen, uh, did the little potted biography of the chief that I left for you assist in any way? Oh, yes. Must have saved me about a year of investigation, at least. Hmm. Potted biography? So that's how it... Oh, now look, sir. Yes, then it, yes, I always used to work on the theory that whoever it was that had lost whatever it was from wherever it was, it was a stone-cold bonker set that the chief knew where whatever it was had been flogged, and I was never wrong, was I, chief? <laughs> no, sir, and welcome aboard again to you too, sir, I'm sure. You've been at a... <laughs> You've been at a training ship, I gather. Yes, I have. Mind you, I never quite cleared up a certain detail. I'm still not sure if I was supposed to be training them or if they were supposed to be training me. <laughs> well, I hope you spotted up on your navigation also. Oh, I did, on the train down here. Now, let's see. Um, how does it go? Ah, yes, sir. Left arm down a bit. Uh, no, uh, left hand down a bit. Sir. Ah, yes. Left hand down a bit, it shall be. Far be it for me to upset the smooth and efficient running of a ship like Trightbridge. Uh, possibly not, sir, but I have a sneaking suspicion you will do. It's going to be a carver, that's what it is. It's going to be a carver, it's going to be a dirty, great, diabolical carver. <laughs> Mr. Phillips would have to go and get promotified when this one was going spare, wouldn't he? Right. 
Right, lads, settle down, Admiral's chatting. Now remember where you are. This is Admiralty, not a saloon bar. Order, gentlemen. I'll have a large gin. <laughs> right, anything to report? Yes, sir, I have. Who's this idiot? Merivale's the name, sir. J.B. Merivale, Director of Naval Expenditure, sir. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm concerned. Yes, I am definitely, definitely concerned. Huh? Ever since we've had that computer installed in records office next door, our wages bill has gone stark raving bonkers. Up every week, you know. Can't be right, but I've tracked it down. Yes, I think I can definitely say I've tracked it down. I can say that all right. <laughs> Hello, Mary Vale here. Out in office here, sir. Admiral of the fleet approaching, sir. Good man. Much obliged. Fags out, chap. Admiral of the fleet on the way. Oh, never mind him. What's been going on? Well, as I said, it's this computer toy of Armbridge's, you see. We think it must have been promoting one man like a mad thing because the pay increases involved are doing my department a terrible mischief. We were four and six overdrawn last week, so that'll show. <laughs> well, then you'd better sort it out, quick. Yes. Next week's my payday, and I don't want an IOU. Oh, rest assured, Admiral, rest assured. I've got a chap investigating the computer now. He's carrying out a set of tests with various cars to see why it's going wrong. Admiral of the fleet to see you, gentlemen. Hello, you chaps. <laughs> I say, I say, you do do yourselves proud up here, don't you? Mm, oh, we do indeed, yes we do, but there are cuts coming, sir, by George, there are, there are indeed. Oh, pity, pity. I, I'm just going to ask if I could have a special rack to park my sword in. <laughs> I've sliced through three umbrellas with the beastly thing already. One doesn't have to wear one's sword all the time, actually. One doesn't? Well, somebody might have told one, then one might not have felt such a Charlie getting on a bus with it. <laughs> Oh, really, sir, really. As an admiral of the fleet, one cannot come here on the bus. One found that out, actually. It took three inspectors to get one scabbard out of the used ticket box this morning. Reaping ivy, what was that? It came from the next room, sir, the one with the computer in it. Battle stations, follow me! Lummy, <coughs> Lummy, oh, 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 shouldn't be smoking like that, surely. It's far too young. Keep well away from the, <laughs> Keep well away from the brute chaps. It's gone nasty on us. Who's this idiot? Computer maintenance stuff, sir. We're calling a shade too late, I'm afraid. Ha! Huh, more inefficiency. Well, I'll tell you this. As the Admiral of the Fleet, I'm going to have a sort out. There'll be no more of this nonsense. Now, what went wrong? Oh, we know that, sir. It was one of those cards. Uh, some nit made one out on a postcard and stabbed holes in it. Well, naturally, Fred got indigestion trying to eat that and uh, did his not. Honestly, it's a bit much. Fancy doing a thing like that. I, I have a good mind to have the, the culprit court-martial for damaging admiralty property. The man must be made an example of. Now, now, what's his name and rank? Come on, speak up, speak up. Uh, uh, Sub-Lieutenant Phillips L, sir. Right, now you tell him to... Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh. There must be some mistake. Huh? I'm afraid there have been several, sir. However, once we get Fred fixed, it'll all be straightened out. He'll soon correct the errors then. That's what I'm afraid of. Um, now, now, take your time. There's no hurry. Sometime in the next um, 25 years will do. <laughs> uh, left hand down a bit, Chief. Left hand down a bit, it is, Mr. Price, sir. Aren't you approaching the dock a bit fast, Mr. Price? Mm, yes, very probably. Let's have a tiny butcher's. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, now, what's the one we do about that, eh? Um, slowest turn, Chief? Everybody down! Mr. Price! Well, we all have to learn sometime, don't we? <laughs> oh, we do, sir. We do, but we could have picked a time when there was a slightly smaller audience. I mean, look who's coming aboard. Captain Povey and friends. Yeah, trust him to be around as a witness when... Good gracious, I must be seeing things. No, I'm afraid not. I'm seeing them too. I've seen what? Blondie is back in town. And he's got his sub-lieutenant's uniform on. Hello, chaps. Had a good trip? Mr. Phillips, what on earth are you doing in that uniform? I thought you'd be an admiral of a fleet by now. I was. That was why Fred Computables blew up. <laughs> he, he shoved my card up one every time he was switched on. There was nowhere else he could go. I'd run out of ranks, so he burped in moderate, and now I'm back. <laughs> Excuse me, but what's he talking about? Allow me. Uh, somebody, I'm not saying who, but I have my suspicions. Somebody put in a substitute do-it-yourself index card for Sub-Lieutenant Phillips. Yeah. 
Yes, well, I think I'd better nip down and see if there's any damage done below the waterline, said a shark. Yes, you yeah. mind the damage here, you should see the bill for the damage to Admiralty's computer. Yeah, well, I'd rather not, sir. No, I've no aid for figures, sir. You know, I was rather afraid something like this might happen. What did Fred Computicles have to say eventually? Well, sir, the chap in charge made out another card for me and put that in, and it came back marked Phillips L, confirmed, sub-lieutenant. Unfortunately, it also drafted him back here. No, there are times when I feel that a man can't win. But that means we've got two navigation officers, sir. Oh, let's face it. With Mr. Price and Mr. Phillips, you still haven't got one. However, <laughs> Mr. Phillips is drafted back to Troutbridge and Mr. Price is drafted back to the training ship for the time being. Sorry about this, Dennis. No, not at all. Well, it's been nice seeing you again anyway, sir. Oh, it has indeed. Uh, perhaps we could all have a nosh-up in the wardroom before you go, eh? Oh, an excellent idea. Thirsty work navigating. I never realised Still, I must say, it's been a grand morning, gentlemen. A grand morning. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, grand, grand morning. <laughs> Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was practically every rank in the Navy, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Heather was Heather Chasen, Judy was Judy Cornwell, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, Rear Admiral Ironbridge was Michael Bates, and as Lieutenant Price, we were particularly glad to welcome our old friend Dennis Price. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. It's funny how things don't always work out as you expect at times, like getting on a bus and finding you have to offer the conductor a five-pound note for a threepenny fare. You expect a terrible fuss, but instead he gives you change without a murmur. All in pennies and halfpennies. Yes, well, things aren't working out for Troutbridge either. They've just been to Gibraltar, and they imagine they're on their way home. But I think we'll find that they're not. A starboard, um... Ooh, about ten degrees, Chief. Starboard, ooh. About, have you been reading a good book or something, sir? What's happened to the right hand up a bit, then? Yes, that's just what I was wondering. In any case, I should have thought we were on course before. Honestly, I give a perfectly simple navigation order, and we end up with a blooming inquest. Starboard about ten degrees, Chief, if nobody objects. Starboard about ten degrees it is, sir. Ah, that's better. Hmm. Busybodies, some people are. <laughs> Miss Phillips... Why alter course 10 degrees starboard now? Well, the sun was in my eyes. <laughs> oh, really? You know what you used to do, sir? You used to bought yourself an any one for tennis eye shade when we were in Gibraltar, sir. No, I shouldn't mention Gibraltar, Chief. He hasn't got over the answer he got from one of the locals when he asked if the rock was lettered all through. <laughs> I, I did nothing of the sort. <laughs> uh, what do they say, sir? Don't knock the rock. <laughs> oh, ha, rather weakly, ha. It's the prospect of being on our way back to England, home, and a couple of bints I've got my peepers on. Oh, yes, it'll be nice to taste a bit of real roast beef and Yorkshire pudding again. Mmm, rather. One well, misses the old country when one's away from it. The green fields. Big Ben having his little bong. <laughs> Yes, and the taxis and the, and the big red buses. Yes, it'll be good to get back. Oh, I wonder if it's changed. Hmm? Oh, I doubt it. No, no, probably not. Let's see, how long is it we've been away? Four days. <laughs> well, hello, chap. Sorry to barge in, but I've been down to the wireless room and we've had rather a nasty signal. Have we, Mr. Bates? Uh, who from? Captain Povey? Who else? I'm afraid we're not returning to Pompey after all. We're being sent on a greatly secret mission. <laughs> oh, well, if that's the case... Ah! 
Oh, it's it's me leg. It's it's me leg. Take the wheel, somebody. Stretch of orders. Every hour of the hospital ship is a man to be taken off. Oh, my goodness, Pert, we has got the twinching screws. Oh, shut up. We don't even know the secret mission is dangerous yet. I'm rather afraid it will be. There's all oh, me arms. Me arms. I think I've got the creeping agonies as well now. Pert, will you be quiet? You're coming with us. But I can't, sir. What good is a man who's got the twinging screws and the creeping agony, sir? I'll only be a burden to you, sir. As you have been for years. <laughs> so now pack it in and let's see what this mission is. But it's inhumanical. That's what it is. It's inhumanical. Here I am. Practically on the last bit of puff. Uh, shall I ask the medical officer to give you a dose of that medicine he's always giving everybody? Bye. Oh. No, no. No, not like me, son. Not as bad as that, no. I've, I've only just settled down from the last lot I had, thanks. Patient quite recovered. Splendid. Uh, now, what's this mission, Mr. Bates? Uh, well, <clears throat> we're uh, to put about and sail for Casablanca, sir. Once there, we're to pick up an Interpol agent from Pepe Lamoco's calf, sir. There's a sort of code thing. We have to say, Madras curry, please, very hot. And then he'll know we are the chaps who are going to get him back to England. You know, this could be jolly exciting. An old city of intrigue and all that. Yeah, well, bags pert, we don't have to go walkers down the street of a thousand ponds. <laughs> I don't want an inflamed ooter as well as the twinging screws and the creeping agonies. We'll try to avoid it. Right, when you're ready, Mr. Phillips, you might point us at Casablanca. <laughs> Boxes, mister, child and forty-two wives to support. Aye, 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 sailor. You, you want jolly, warm postcard? Everyone a splendid old bag? Get, get your official guide to the Casbah here, fully illustrated and lucky numbers on the back. I say, Jess, what a fascinating place this is. Yes, it has a sort of old world eastern charm. <laughs> Yeah, and I think some of the charm is so old, it's gone off. <laughs> Did you have any luck when you came down here earlier to find Pepe Lamoco's calf, Chief? No, sir. No, I chatted several of the stall holders, but they all said that none of them even knew who Pepe Lamoco's it was. I see. Well, we shall just have to go on searching, I suppose. Aye, aye, mister. You buy lovely rug? Uh, no, no, thank you. How oh, about jolly, splendid carpet? Beautiful quality. Specially imported from faraway places with jolly odd sounding monikers. I say, they look pretty good, you know. Uh, no, no, I, I, I wouldn't if I was you. Now, come away, Mr. Phillips, said, don't get but involved. they're an absolute bargain, No, you? no, they're not, sir. No, you don't know where they've been. <laughs> Dirty boots trampling all over. No, 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 just a minute. No, I really think we ought to be moving on, sir. I have lots and lots of other walloping good Wilton in splendidly part one condition. No, 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 I'm rather interested in this one. It looks a little familiar. Yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I know, it's... It's the same one as in your cabin, sir. No, 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 it isn't, sir. No, no, sir. It's a, it's a different shade entirely. No, 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 wait a minute, Mr. Phillips. Look, there's the little hole cut out where my hot water pipe goes through. Oh, yes. And there's that, that flattened out bit where your wardrobe has been standing. Oh, look, I, I can see Pepula Doodars now, sir. This way, gents. Come uh, on. Uh, uh, Here's the grubby mark where I dropped the jam out of my donut last year. <laughs> Pertwee, this is my carpet. How did it get on this stall? Oh, sir, why ask me? I mean to say, I, I hope you're not suggesting that I'd stoop so low as to sell your carpet. Oh, no, no, no. I sell number one carpet. But so far, no luck. Give Pertwee his cut as soon as Delta. he... Oh. Yes, yeah, well, I'm sure there's been some misunderstanding, and when I get back to the ship, I shall find my carpet is still in my cabin. That's right, isn't it, Chief? I well, that, that depends on how long you're going to be away. Oh, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure it will be, sir. I hope. Look, chaps, there's a man over there by that stall who looks as though he's been there since the year dot. He must know where Peppy's cafe is, surely. Greetings, gentlemen. You buy from old Nick's stall, yes? 
footwear as sold to the crowned heads of many countries. Sandals to last one a lifetime. Mind you, a lifetime in the cash bar ain't so long, but at the price, who should worry? Um, no, thank you. We wondered if you could direct us to Pepe Lamoco's calf. Oh, this old Nick humbly regret he cannot oblige. Nobody knows the identity of Pepe Lamoco. It is unwritten rule of the cash bar. You like sandals instead? Uh, no, no, no thanks. Just, just a minute, sir. They look jolly good, you know. A chap can't go on the beach wearing anything else but sandals, you know. You go on the beach in sandals and nothing else, and the chap is going to end up in the nick. <laughs> Genuine reduction, please. Only 15 francs a pair. Any size, left or right hand foots. 15 francs for those things? Well, that's a bit steep. If I may presume to intervene, I think I may be of some assistance. The name is Smith. There's really no need to trouble you, Mr. Um, Smith. A pleasure. I'm used to these matters, having been out here in this misbegotten hole for many more years than I care to remember. One soon learns the local traditions, and the foremost of these is the art of bargaining. Ahmed here would be most insulted if you accepted his first price, I assure you. I say, do you, do you think you could get them a bit cheaper? Ahmed. Oh, yes, Mr. Smith. You son of an unwanted beggar in a flea-bitten tent. How dare you offend these gentlemen with such stupidity? He offers three francs, and you're a robber if you accept. Three francs? <laughs> Mr. Smith is joking with Ahmed. A special offer for friends of Mr. Smith. Twelve francs. Profiteering son of an unnamed barbarian. Five francs and not a dirham more. I want no trouble with Mr. Smith. Ten francs. Six. Make it seven. Nine. No, ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Sold. Sold. By George, it works. <laughs> Do you know, I might have actually paid... Now, just a minute. <laughs> just a minute, Ahmed. Uh, could we do that last bit again? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, Mr. Smith. There are some people in this world one just can't help. It is immaterial. Perhaps you would all like to have a drink with me sometime? Oh, yes, please. Oh, please don't be so eager. No, uh, no, no, we should very much like that, Mr. Smith. I own a rather dubious sort of cafe where the rabble of at least two continents accumulate at one time or another. Not the Ritz, but an experience one may not easily forget. Yeah, well, I don't think I'm thirsty after all. Yeah, I say, you're, you're not the chap who owns Pepe Lamoco's calf, are you? Pepe Lamoco? Oh, you've heard of Pepe already, have you? No, I am most certainly not he. And none of us knows who Pepe is. We only know that he is the brains behind half the jewel robberies in Europe and uh, a scoundrel who is probably only second to myself. Good morning, gentlemen. My car. Drop in any time. I hope the sandals fit. <laughs> Thanks. I think. <sighs> oh, he don't give you the creep and agonies. He gives you the agonizing creeps. Yes, I, I didn't want to say anything, but I thought there was something a bit odd about him. You know? How very observant of you, Mr. Phillips. Oh, did you think so, sir? You know, that's the nicest thing that anyone's said to me all day. Mr. Phillips, sir, mm? before you float away on a fleecy white cloud of pride and wonder at the workings of Leslie's bonds, number one didn't mean it, sir. No? No. It was a sarcastic mystical, sir. Are you sure? Mr. Phillips, that man was just about the most sinister man there is around here. And if you have a look round here, that's quite something. Yes, yes, I suppose. Let me look! Ah, oh, don't shoot! Help me, Sir Anders! Chief, put your hands down. Oh, uh, look where, Mr. Phillips. Look, over there, sir. That, that, that must, must be it. Pepe Le Casbah's calf. Good gracious, yes. I wonder if it is. Well, there's only one way to find out. We'll have to go in, give the code word... Madras curry, please. Very hot. You would remember it. Come on. And when I say it, watch out. Anything might happen. Uh, here's another calf, chaps. This one may be it. Well, who cares? But we for one has had it. We've been to 18 of them. Pepe Le Casbah's calf, Pepe Le Bazaar's calf, Pepe Le Sewer's place. Pepe Le High Street's dump. 
<laughs> what happened? None of them were Pepe Lamocos. No. And at every one we copped a plate of Madras curry very hot. <laughs> Jonesy's tum-tum is about 120 in the shade. <laughs> No, 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 steady, gentlemen. We must persevere. Remember that somewhere in this devilish place there's a man hoping that we'll get him out of it. Yes, sir. Me. Oh, shut up. No, in any case, I, I'm pretty confident that this calf will be the one. Well, I'm blown if I can see how you make that out, sir. This one isn't even called a Pepe La something or other. It's Sam's Bar. <laughs> yes, quite. Now, watch it, Mr. Phillips, sir. I think this could be another of number one's dead audible... <laughs> now, it, 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 it's so simple, I wonder you hadn't spotted it. It may be called Sam's because it belongs to that chap who wrote all those diaries. What chap? Samuel... Peepers. <laughs> cool. Eighteen plates of Madras curry, very hot, and then jokes like that for afters. Well, I did try and warn you, Mr. Phillips. Oh, come on, let's go in, and if this isn't the one, we'll give up until tomorrow. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to Sam's. Oh, good evening. I'm Sam, so make yourself at home. Your first drinks are on the house. Hey, boy, table for three, one of the best. I, uh, I may join you for a drink later after the cabaret. Watch the dance by Shiriba, gentlemen. It is quite something. Oh, we will. In the meantime, I can recommend the Madras curry. It's very hot. <laughs> Please, senior. I knew it. I knew it. Another dirty great dollop of red hot curtain curl. Oh, I'm going to add my tongue with an asbestos overcoat. I say. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to be worth it. <laughs> Have you seen her? Oh. <laughs> oh, there's something about the East there, really. <laughs> no, no, watch him, Chief. He may have one of his nasty turns. I am watching him, sir, but what's he watching? That girl with the tray. Look. <laughs> How about that? It must be a jolly tricky job. Why, sir? Well, when she looks down, how can she see what's on the tray? Oh, yes. She probably works from memory. Cigarettes. Chocolates. Turkish delights. I, um... I don't think I feel very well. <laughs> Give him an iced water, Chief, over the bonds. I, um, I, I, I say, what's your, what's your, um, what's your name? I am younger sister of Cigarette. They call me Fag End. <laughs> oh, what a pretty name. I, I, I suppose you don't by any chance know anyone with another pretty name, a man called Pepe Lamoco? No, but nobody knows who is Pepe. He rules the Casbah, but we do not know who he is. Oh, what a Pepe. I mean, pity. <laughs> What's that? I can't go! Oh, what do you mean? Ah, what's, going yeah, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Happy demands diplomatic immunity! Here! Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, hey! Hey! Uh, my, my mind where you're going. What's the idea? A thousand pardons, monsieur. Pure accident. You nearly knocked me over. Oh, please keep perfectly calm, my friends. There is, I assure you, no cause for alarm. Mr. Smith, this isn't your bar, surely? No, but the Casbah, one must circulate if one wishes to have one's ear to the ground. <laughs> I fear we may be asked a few impertinent questions by my old friend, the inspector. May I suggest that you permit me to answer them? Gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Inspector Henri Le Cheval, known affectionately as Harry the Hoff. Charmed, uh, delighted, panic-stricken. <laughs> I must apologize for any little uh, inconveniences, but the lady seems to have mislaid some uh, diamonds. So careless, but uh, one must do what one can. One does have to satisfy one's chief that one has made every effort, you understand. Oh, one understands, all right. Uh, one has a chief just like yours, actually. <laughs> a little cognac, Inspector? Oh, how kind. I've already raided your cafe, of course. I never doubted it for a moment. 
Uh, Inspector, I suppose you don't know who Pepe Lamoco is? I have my suspicions, naturally. There is only one person who could tell us for certain, and that is Pepe's girlfriend, Sheriba. What, the one that does the dance here that's uh, quite something? The same. And it is. <laughs> I hope the police whistles were sufficiently loud for her to hear and warn Pepe. Uh, just a minute. Don't you want to catch him? With a few lousy diamonds? <laughs> when I take Pepe, I want it to be big. He's a master. And as such, one must treat him with respect. No, I'll get Pepe one day when the time is right. Who is it? That's me, Shariba. Come in. Uh, Sam, what's the inspector doing here? So how should I know? Maybe he was thirsty again. It's more than that, isn't it, Sam? Maybe. Well, what is it this time, Sam? Robbery? A little smuggling? Murder, perhaps? Look, baby, I promise. Sure you promised. You promised one hell of a lot of times, didn't you, Sam? Well, it... Your luck can't last much longer. The inspector knows you're Pepe. He's just waiting for the right moment, Sam. Make no mistake about that. So let him wait. I don't think he will, my darling. I'm frightened. Look, Cherie, but tonight sees us in the clear. The inspector dropping in is a little inconvenient, sure, but but this is it. With what I make tonight, we'll be laughing. As soon as I get rid of the stuff, I'll sell the cafe to Smith, at a loss, knowing him, and then it's the first flight out of here for both of us. We can make a fresh start. It'll be a new life. For both of us. If the inspector doesn't pick you up first, it might be. Look, Sam, quit now. Let's be sure. Let's get away now. Oh, relax. The inspector is just guessing. Tell you what, Shariba. You go home, and as soon as everything is finished, I'll pick you up, and we'll go straight to the airport. No. I want to know what it is this time. It's nothing. It's just a few diamonds lost in transit. That's all. I see. Well... That's it, Sam. You promised there'd be no more. Well, now I'm telling you there will be no more. Let's face it, you can't quit. You never will. There'll always be just one more little job. No, no, no. no. I mean... Look, Goodbye, look. Sam. One of us is a fool. I think it's you. Look, Shariba! One thousand pardons, Mr. Sam. Uh, Inspector here uh, with search warrant. Get lost, you crow. Oh, no, 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 no. Diamonds get lost very rapidly in pocket of sailor when I hear police whistle. Uh, Good man. Beat it. Excuse me for interrupting, Sam. Well, 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 the ever-present Mr. Smith. Well, I don't have the diamonds. My dear chap, I didn't imagine you would have. Of course, if you want to know where they are, I could tell you. I never doubted it for one moment. Mm, getting them back is going to be a little more difficult. A waiter of mine accidentally bumped into some of the British Navy guests you were with. I did wonder about that little accident. I must confess, a rather clumsy attempt, I thought. Yeah, he's not one of my best men. Uh, he reported that the items you appear to have lost might possibly be on one of the naval men. Perhaps Shariba could get them back without too much fuss. Otherwise, the inspector might not only make a slightly more thorough search, he might even take a closer look at your passport. Yeah, and all this time I thought we were friends. In any case, Shariba is not quite as reliable as she was. Oh, she's turned respectable. Yeah, it could be. If I asked her to help, she'd turn us both in. <laughs> then the little cigarette girl, perhaps. She's, uh, she's had my wristwatch three times this evening already. Oh, <laughs> I have warned her about that. Forget it, my friend. I've had her bracelet three times as well. <laughs> Accidents will happen. Yeah. Mr. Sam, are you busy? Uh, come in, Fagan. We, we might have a little job for you. Uh, Fagan, Mr. Smith and I have something very important on tonight. We think you can help us. Will you do it? What's in it for Fagan? An airplane trip with me, baby. This is the last job. We can fly out of here and make a fresh start. It'll be a new life, just the two of us. You mean the three of us, don't you? <laughs> Shariba, I, I was only kidding, baby. I knew you were there. Get you... lost, Sam. Oh, dear, I never could stand domestic squabbles. I think it might be better if I went down and dealt with this little matter myself. I'll come with you. It's nearly time for my number anyway, and I think Sam has plenty to occupy his mind. 
Help! Help! Had we on fire! More ice water for John Z! Had we row? We don't want to attract attention. Yes, we do, sir. Touch the brigade, lads! <laughs> Yeah, and that reminds me, I want to work with that waiter when he does turn up. He bumped into me when the police arrived. It was jolly careless. What was? He dropped a load of ice in my pocket. <laughs> load of ice? Yes, look, look. Look, all... Oh. Oh, now that's jolly odd, isn't it? It hasn't melted. Come on, let's have a close at... Oh. <laughs> well, good night all. See you back at the ship. It's been a lovely evening. Uh, Chief, Chief, uh, what's the matter? It's only a pocket full of... Well, good night, Mr. Phillips. Uh, it's good. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? That's not ice, sir. It's not glittery pocket fluff either, sir. That's diamonds, sir. Put them away, quick. Good evening again, my friend. Good evening. Oh! oh. <laughs> My apologies. Can I get anything for you? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Smith. Yeah, and if you do, for Pete's sake, don't get us any more Madras curry very hot. What was that? Madras curry. Very hot. At last. You were looking for an Interpol agent. <gasps> if so, you found him. We have. Who is it? Nick, it's Mr. Smith. What do you want us to do, Mr. Smith? Our ship's ready to sail. I can't leave yet. I was afraid of that. Part of my assignment was to trap Pepe Lamoco, and I'm with an ace of doing it. However, I must have proof. You still have the dam? Yes, please. Uh, I'm afraid. Good. I'm going to give them to Shariba. She's good and mad at Sam just now, and I think Sam is Pepe Lamoco. If we can plant those diamonds on him, there will be enough proof that Sam is a fence, even for Inspector Chavin. What do you mean, if we plant them? Leslie doesn't want any trouble either. Well, neither does Stephen. And Johnsy never did. I merely meant that Shariba is one of the few people who knows for certain who Pepe is. And in the mood she's in, I think she'll plant them on him. It's still the same old story. A fight for love and glory. A case of do or die. I say, she's jolly well taking her time, isn't she? I haven't seen her plant those diamonds yet. Just as well, neither you nor anyone else is supposed to. But and the only table she's been anywhere near is ours. Shh. Bye. Well, gentlemen, I trust you enjoyed the cabaret. Mr. Smith here probably fell asleep. He has very poor taste. Possibly, but I'd like you to remain right where you are for a second. Inspector, the diamonds. If you search Sam, I think you'll find he's got them on him. Oh, surely not. Yeah, well, I hope this isn't going to take long. I have a date with my fiancée. Ah, the delectable fag end. You're a little out of date, Mr. Smith. I have put the fag end out. <laughs> Sam and I have made it up. We're engaged. Lummy, if, if, if they've made it up, she could hardly plant it on him. I mean, she's going to plant it on somebody. Uh, would anybody mind if I lay down for a moment? I don't know what Sam's going to do to you for this, Smith. There is nothing on him. Yeah, there must be. Uh, it was all arranged. She was to plant the diamonds on Pepe Lamoco. If he hasn't got them... She must still have them. No, I haven't. I planted them all right, and they're on this table. You say, Mr. Smith, that whoever has the diamonds must be Pepe Lamoco. Sam hasn't got them, so he's in the clear. Right. My girl. All you have to do now, Inspector, is to find the one who has got them. Sam and I won't bother to wait as we have to get to the airport. We'll miss Sam in the Casbah. Now, gentlemen, if you'd be good enough... To turn out your pockets. What? Oh, now, wait a minute. Your pockets. Oh, come on, may as well, sir. It'd be the quickest way of clearing things up. Now, all I've got, Inspector, is a packet of fags, a bunch of keys, and a... Ah! <laughs> Who done it? Who gave Johnsy the glittering ice? I'm not Pippi Lamoco. I'm, I'm not even Pertwee Lamoco. <laughs> I don't want to start afresh in the nick. I don't want a new life in a nasty suit with arrows all over it. Help! Get Johnsy out the casbah. Over here, Perry Mason, you're working, lad. And that was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. 
John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one. The inspector was played by Michael Bates, the waiter was Ten Elevens, Sam was Ronnie Barker, Mr. Smith was Richard Caldicott, Fag End was Judy Cornwall, and Shariba was played by Heather Chasen. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> we can all get caught on the hop at times. I once read the nine o'clock news at half past eight. Now, it wouldn't have mattered so much except it was yesterday's nine o'clock news anyway. <laughs> Mind you, even a member of parliament can get caught out at question time now and then, and that calls for a bit of rapid thinking. Rapid thinking about who he can pass the can to this time. Order! Order! Resign! Resign, I said! Send the gunboat! Order! Order! Dogs with pennies in the slot! Order! Order! Uh, uh, as I said... We are doing everything within our power to do, uh, to do everything uh, within our power. What? What? What is the honourable member of ministry doing about Patani land? Yeah, eh? yeah. Where is it, Gilroy? I hadn't finished. What is the honourable member doing about Patani land? Eh? Ever since they had home rule and left the Commonwealth, the Patani land government has veered. Yes, definitely veered away <laughs> from the mother country. Have they really? Well, they're a funny lot, you know. Answer! Answer! Down with turnstiles, Ben! Pennies in the slot! <laughs> no, do leave off, El Gap! You're confusing the issue! Answer! Padani land, eh? Well, naturally, I'd like notice of that question, and it would not be in the interests of security for me to divulge. Answer! 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 Send the gunboat! Resign! Yes, all right, all right. Give me a minute. I say, uh, Claude, old man, wake up, will you? Wake up. Eh? Eh, what? Oh. Uh, furthermore, it would not be in the interest of security for me to dive out. No, 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 I've said that, old man. I've said that. <laughs> Patani land, old man. Patani land? land? Yes, yes. Where the blazes is it? Oh, it's that island thing. Uh, just to the east of... Oh, 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 that lot. Yes, yes. Well, well, uh, we better bring an ambassador out there. That ought to keep old loud chops over there quiet for a bit. Now, oh, here it goes. Uh, curiously enough... Curiously enough, the whole Patani land situation has recently been under review, and I understand that British ambassador is now being appointed, and it is hoped that the ambassador, Sir Frederick Prattley, will soon further the cordial relations and the valued friendship of that great country and ourselves. <laughs> Apart from the strategic position of the island, there are many historical bonds which tie our two great nations together. For one thing... They're still stuck with pennies, turnstiles. Oh, goodness. Order! Order! Yeah, you know Gladys has got a one-track mind. Um, <laughs> I can further inform the honourable member that this very evening Sir Frederick and his wife are sailing to take up the appointment. Hooray! And I am sure, I am sure, the honourable member will join the rest of the house in wishing them every possible success. Claude, Claude, get on to Admiralty and get that little trip laid on. Otherwise, old Big Mouth over there will be up on his toots again with another crafty one tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure you will all realize that it will not be in the interests of security for me to divulge any further details. Yes, sir! Don't with pennies in the slot! <laughs> Send the gunboat! Well, if you ask me, I reckon making us act as a water bus to Patani land for Sir Frederick and Lady Thingamy is a jolly poor do. Yeah, so do I, sir. I've got myself a smashing date for tomorrow night, I had. What, the blonde cook out of Charlie's calf, I presume? Certainly not, sir, no. This particular milady acquaintance of mine is not the sort of soil her lily waits over hot stew, sir. She's a beautifully brought up bint. <laughs> Sounds enchanting. Where did you meet her? She's the waitress at Charlie's Fish Cat. <laughs> ah, well, that's progress for you. Four weeks I've been trying to get her to come out for a bit of cuddle in a cul-de-sac, and now we've got this trip. 
Well, it's Captain Povey's idea, Chief. He's um, just coming up the gangway, so why don't you complain to him? Oh, I will, sir. I'll give him a piece of... <laughs> no, I don't think I'll bother, sir. Thanks all the same. Lummy, I suppose that's a Frederick and a lady what's it with him. Yeah, hmm? it must be. I don't think I've ever seen an ambassador in a brown flat hat and a bright blue suit before. <laughs> uh, uh, stand by the receivers, this gentleman. At the end, chop! Uh, there you are, number one. This is Sir Frederick and Lady Fatley, the new ambassador to Britannialand. Well, stand easy, gentlemen, stand easy, like. I don't want uh, none of this ceremonial nonsense for me and the wife while we're on your little boat. Oh, thank you, sir. He won't have it, Sir Flatley won't, you know, he won't have it. He's done well, I grant you, but you'd never know how much money is made from the way he treats lesser folk. I mean, at home, he talks to Mayor or Dustman as if they were the same man. Well, I mean, this year it is the same man, but you know what I mean, don't you, look? Yeah, 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 I think I get the idea idea. Uh, no, I haven't forgotten my humble beginnings, you know. We may have got plenty of brass now, and I may be an ambassador. <laughs> it's a great honour, that. A great honour. Oh, but richly deserves a flatly. Richly deserved. Well, if you say so, love. Ah, oh, but I never forget I owe it all to Flatley's Bakelite Buttons. <laughs> hey, uh, you've heard the name, of course. Uh, to tell you the truth, I can't say I have. But you must have, young man, the name Flatley is stamped on everyone. Uh, possibly, sir, but you know how it is. One's so busy that one rarely gets time to read buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, um, perhaps you could arrange for Sir Frederick and Lady Flatley. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 Bobby, no ceremony. Just call me Sir Fred. Yeah, oh, most kind. <laughs> Perhaps, number one, you'd show Sir and Lady uh, uh, Fred to their quarters and, and we can get underway. Yes, yeah, certainly, sir. Uh, Chief. Chief. Pertwee. I, oh, sorry, sir. I was, was trying to read the name on the buttons on my tunic, but some knickers sewn them all upside down. <laughs> oh, you won't find flatly on them, lad. No. Great shame we never got the Admiralty contract, but they're an old-fashioned lot up there. They didn't like the idea of having Flatley written on the front. Would have made him a nice packet, too. I mean, it wouldn't it, Sir Flatley. I mean, yes, it would have made him a nice packet, oh, too. Well, sir, that's got nothing to do with it, Alice. In quoting, I acted on purely patriotic motives, of course. Now, lads, uh, where do me and Lady F. Kip? Uh, uh, this way, sir. Uh, you'll be in the captain's cabins. Oh, will we? Well, it'll have to do, I suppose. You'll have somewhere handy for me staff to bunk down, I hope. Your staff, sir, but, but nobody said anything about you bringing any staff with you. Well, naturally, Lady F never goes anywhere without her personal maid. That's her at bottom of gangway. Akit, up here. Yes, Sir Frederick? Wait. Right, which of you is going to show Akit where she's to bunk down? Well, <laughs> um, that is if nobody else wants... <laughs> I mean, um, cool. Yeah, quite. Uh, very kind of you to offer, Mr. Phillips, but I think we'll let Abel Seaman Goldstein show Miss Hackett to her quarters. Oh, pity. Uh, it won't take me a minute to pop down to the captain's cabin with Sir F and Lady F, said I mean, I'll be only too pleased. No, to... Chief. Uh, no? No. Oh. Hard luck, Johnsy. Right. You heard that, Hackett. You're to wait here, and as soon as he turns up, follow the sailor. <laughs> and there'll be none of that, Hackett. Right, lead on, lad. All right, this way, you, you flatly ships. <laughs> well, Captain Povey, Sir Frederick certainly seems to be a self-made man. He is, number one. I'd say there's a glaring example of what happens when you do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, please. Honestly, that, that was as bad as some of the jokes we get... Mr. Phillips. Mm -hmm. Sir? Come out of the rain and laugh. What? Oh, I see what you mean, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. It's so jolly funny. <laughs> yes, Very funny. yes, yes. All right, but well, it wasn't as funny as that. Now, 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 come on, number one. Time to get underway for Patani Land. What? Uh, oh, yes, sir. We were just waiting for you to go ashore, and then we'll be off, sir. Go ashore? I'm coming with you. Didn't I tell you? Uh, no, that was a little treat you must have forgotten to mention, sir. <laughs> oh, yes. On a task as important as this, I naturally decided I should be aboard to see that everything goes smoothly. And heaven help you if it doesn't. Lummy, that's torn it. Uh, what has, Mr. Fred? Uh, uh, the, the sleeping arrangement, sir. If, if Sir and Lady Fred are in the captain's <laughs> cabin, and Ackett is in number one's cabin, and you'll be in my cabin, and the captain will be in Lieutenant Bates's cabin. Correct. Well, sir, that means that number one will be sharing the wardroom annex with Mr. Bates. So where does Leslie get his little bonce down? <laughs> I have no idea. 
<laughs> uh, there's always the engine room, of course. Uh, perhaps the steady rhythm will lull you to sleep. I doubt it, sir. You haven't heard our engines. <laughs> Tony Lang's fine and magnificent jetty now, sir. Right, Chief. And for heaven's sake, be careful, Mr. Phillips. Remember, this is a ceremonial occasion. Oh, don't you worry, sir. You leave it to me. With reluctance, we shall have to. Uh, easy now. Easy. Easy, easy it is, sir. Nicely. Right, a little bit more. Just a little bit more, sir. A little bit more. A little bit more, sir. A little bit, um... Less. <laughs> I might have known he'd bash the living daylights out of it. Well, uh, try to look at it this way, sir. At least they know we're here. Oh, the ones that were on it at the time and are now wading ashore do anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh they didn't half bob up and down. <laughs> Keep going, lads. Last one ashore, Sir Custard. <laughs> Phillips' navigation on this fool shouting his head off could well start an international situation. I think it's all right, sir. They're rolling out the red carpet to the foot of the gangway. Thank heavens for that. Oh, what a shame. It's short. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a relative of yours out here, he's probably cut a yard or two off the end and flogged it as a terribly wide stair carpet. I'm not guilty, sir. There are no pertwees out here, sir. Mind you, the rest of it looks pretty good stuff, doesn't it? You know I reckon I could get at least 30 bob a yard. Bertie, not... if you lay one finger on that... Oh, thank heaven's sake, be quiet, all of you. Here's Sir Frederick. Sorry, Sorry pardon. pardon. Lovely, so it is. I don't think a bowler goes with that bright blue suit. Confidentially, I don't think anything would. Ah, uh, lovely trip, gentlemen, lovely trip. Yeah, uh, what do you call these little boats of yours? It's a frigate, Sir Frederick. You hear that, love? Yes, love. It's a lovely name. Ah, uh, well, remember it then, love. We might get ourselves one of these and have it converted for Sunday afternoon trips while we're here. Oh, that'd be lovely, love. Ah, well, consider it done. All set for me official reception, then? Uh, yes, well, I think so, sir. I imagine that's the mayor at the foot of the gangplank, sir. Where? The one with a lovely bunch of flowers. <laughs> oh, is it? Well, if you give them to me, I'll get a Faulkner one straight away. Ambassador or no ambassador. Hug it! Yes, Sir Frederick! Wave your Union Jack, girl. I'm going ashore. Very good, Sir Frederick. Oh, and you better cheer as well. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray! Good girl. Come on, Alice. <laughs> Coming, love. Fall in at the rear, gentlemen. Aye, aye, sir. And this time, Mr. Phillips, try not to fall flat on your face going down the gangway. Hooray! <laughs> All right, pack it, pack it. Don't overdo it. <laughs> Fine and truly magnificent greetings from Paternaland's dirty old mayor. <laughs> And incredible salutations from Patanilan's Boris Veyer and Clark of practically no wax at all also. <laughs> Added together, we both, the two of us, side by side, and as one man, send you a completely unanimous and heartfelt... Bung-ho! Bung-ho! <laughs> and one more... And why not indeed? Bung-ho! Oh, very nice of you. Hack it! All right! Whoa. And bung-ho, smack it likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> now, look here, what's the X going on? I ought to be at my desk ambassadoring by now. Sir Frederick's a very busy man, you know. He'd never have got where he are. I mean, we'd never have got where he am if he hadn't put his back into flatless baker like buttons. Beg pardon, Bob. Yes, I get what is it? Could I stop waving my Union Jack like? Because my arm's going numb, Mum. Oh, is it, love? Well, you better give a couple of quick hoorays and change on, smiling the while, of course, and think of yourself as a flatly button crusader. I say, sir, those chaps are not supposed to do that, are they? W what chaps? Where? Stand me, sir. All the locals are nipping round behind us and climbing aboard Trout Bridge. What? You hear I say? Come off! Come off! Leave that ship alone! She's out of property. Now back! Back! Back, I say! Uh, wait a bit, lads. Wait a bit. I haven't had me say yet. Here, your worship, or whatever you are. Can't you stop him? Oh, yes, but unfortunately, there is no time to lose. As I was about to explain before we had a final chat with your milady manservant, Miss Union Jacket, we sail now, please. Now. All aboard, that's going aboard. Hello, uh, just a minute, just a minute. We wait. sail now, please. But uh, where? Exactly, sir. We've only just got here. After all, there, there are just so many hours that a chap can left hand down a bit, right hand up a bit, steady that over a bit sideways, up to the top and back in, slow head both, and whoa, you know. 
Aye, and how can the flatly and bus over people if they're all out on yon boat having a joyride? Oh, no joyride, no. This is a trip of great urgency. Ah, arrival of his ambassadorship unhappily coincided with the year that Patane lands volcano. Mount Pot. Does it truly <laughs> splendid not? What? Do you mean the volcano's going to be erupt? Oh, nothing could be more certain. Once every 25 years, Mount Pot has a right old go, and this is the year. We sail now, please. Yes. Well, I, I suppose we do. The only thing is, where to? Well, there's the Grumble Islands, sir. They're pretty near. We could take everybody there until the danger's over. Oh, that would be highly considerate. Perhaps Sir Fred could ambass over them as well for a bit. Yeah. Oh, very well. Let's get aboard. We'll sail to the Grumble Islands, as you suggest, and reconsider what's best to do once we've evacuated everyone from here. All right, if you say so. Fuck it! Yes, Sir Frederick! For pity's sake, stop waving that ruddy flag and get back on the boat. <laughs> I never knew there were so many Patani Islanders. We've done this trip over to the Grumble Islands three times already and had a full load every time. Yes, yeah, so I reckon that some of the people from the other islands round here have been rowing over to Patani land just to have a ride on the frigate. <laughs> well, this should be the last trip, sir. We've only got to pick up the Patani land borough surveyor and the clerk of practically no works at all also. Yeah, just as well. If they're right and Mount Pot blows up at the same time every 25 years, we'll only just make it. Well, if we do, it's not Lieutenant Bates' fault, with due respect, of course. Yes, we had to wait ages for you last time we were at Grumble Island. Mr. Bates, what on earth were you doing? Oh, I do apologise, chaps, but I was wrong involved in an experiment. <laughs> well, trust old Bates here. A, a volcano about to go off. We're stuck with evacuating everybody to an island where there's a thunderstorm going full blast and he gets rather involved in an experiment. <laughs> ah, but that was it, you see. What was? Well, the thunderstorm, of course. I had a chat with some of the Grumble Islanders and they told me that there's a storm over the island every day of the year. <laughs> no wonder they call the island that. With all that flashing and banging going on all the time. They've got something to grumble about. Exactly. So I thought it'd be rather a good idea to see if I couldn't put that lightning to good use for them. I was trying to trap the electricity from the lightning. What for? Well, it's obvious. If Bates trapped the lightning for them, it would mean that they could let it out and have a boom, 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 boom noise any time they liked. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying, Mr. Bates? Uh, was I? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> well, I thought if I could harness the power, they'd be able to have electric irons and pop-up toasters in their little mud huts. Well, if it works, you'll have to have a, a heat-controlled iron marked grass so they can iron their skirts. <laughs> the ordinary irons would be too hot, so they might scorch the, um... Cool. <laughs> My second thoughts don't bother. Oh, it's too early to think about that yet, I'm afraid. I was only halfway through my experiment when you called me back. I'd set up a radar cone in a palm tree and ran cable from it to the beach, you see, and just as I was waiting for the next flash, it happened. We called you? No. The monkeys up the palm tree pelted me with coconuts. <laughs> so I scarpered. Oh, oh, here you all are. By George, what a pity. <laughs> you missed it. Lummy, the captain. Uh, missed what, Lieutenant Commander Stanton? I've got a bite, old fruit. Ah, oh, what a shame, sir. Here, I'll nip down and get you a bottle of Linny Minny 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 to rub on your affection. No, 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 not that sort of bite. I've caught a fish, you fool. No, never. It's true, I've caught one. Incredible thing. It's a tropical fella, too. It's a giant grouper, you know. Yes, can't think what he was doing in Portsmouth, but Stanton got him all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Either that or he died of pneumonia, of course. Uh, not fair, really, because the chap must have been pretty tired swimming all the way to England. Uh, uh, sir? Yes, that's me, old Lampsy. What? Uh, this may come as a bit of a shock, but we're not in Portsmouth. We're sailing towards Patarniland. What? Patarniland? Now, look here, old wine gum. I don't want to complain, but I, I think somebody might have told a chap. Started the captain, you know. You go sailing off halfway around the globe without a word like this. If I'd known, I'd have changed my bait going past your brother. <laughs> well, say, if you had, you might not have caught the giant groper. Oh, yes, yes. Well, there is that, of course. I suppose a bit of Yorkshire pudding on a hook came as a bit of a novelty to him. Yeah? <laughs> uh, Tony Lanchetti, or, or what's yeah. left of it, coming up the starboard, sir. We'll tell it to move back a bit. Eh? We're chatting to the captain about... Ah, yes, uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, left. Left. No, no, oh, right, left, right, right, right. Wrong again. Wrong again. Uh, left hand. Left hand. Uh, left as hand. you were. My mind, mind no, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Over your eyes. Over your eyes. Over your eyes. Hold your breath. Man.
made it. What a funny noise. Yeah, very funny, sir. We've got our props fouled. Oh, oh, well, that's a relief. I thought it might have been that giant groper's wife knocking to see if he was still in. Oh, my God. Places was that? We've arrived back at Putani Land again, sir. Uh, so I gathered. But what was all that chuddering? I'm afraid something has fouled our prop, sir. What? Oh, very useful. Here we are on a volcanic island, which we know is going to erupt in a few minutes, and you idiots have to get your propellers fouled. Well, not to worry, sir. We'll have to send a diver down to free us. But that volcano will blow in five minutes. Oh, I know, sir, but there's still plenty of time to... Ah! What? <laughs> Man of Oaks, lads! Pert me wants to row round the world! Get going with the all sleds. In, out, out, in, 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 out. But the volcano, sir, it's going to go, sir. And Pertby wants to be gone before it do. Yes. yes. Well, so do we all. Have we got a diving suit on board? Yes, sir, but no diver. When we collected the suit from stalls, it was empty. <laughs> oh, well, well, that's all right, old socks. I'll go down myself. Yes, give me a chance to look for the big fellas, you know. I could ask them if they fancy a bit more Yorkshire while I'm here. Uh, uh, right, sir. Uh, uh, you will remember we've got to get off as soon as possible, won't you, sir? Yeah. I'll get the air pump going, sir. Uh, good man. While the captain goes down, we'll get the last of the Botani landers aboard. Then we can put to sea as soon as the props are free. Oh, capital, number one, capital. But you won't forget to get me up again before you sail, will you? It's a bit tricky swimming with all that clobber on, you know. Fine and magnificent spectacle, your splendid Royal Naval Captains are made going down in his natty tin suit. Yeah, but very likely. But keep that air pump working for Drake's sake while I get him on the blower. Any news yet, Chief? Uh, no, sir, not yet. Captain's gone down, and I've just got to chat to him, sir. Hello! Trout Bridge calling Captain. Yeah, hello, Pertwee old lead boots. <laughs> nice of you to call. Uh, what's the weather like up there? I pretty wet down here, but he may clear up later. Right? <laughs> here, Chief, let me speak to him. Right, I see. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Can you see what's happened yet, sir? Uh, no, not a thing, old pump. A dirty great shark just swam up and went <sighs> on my little window. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, it's all right. It's, it's clearing now. Oh, 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 by George, those props are fouled up. Uh, wh what is it, sir? Hang on, I'll have a look. Oh, get going, feet. My word, the cobbler made a good job of these boots. They were done. They're lead, Sam. Are they really? <laughs> Can't get the leather, I suppose. Oh, well. oh, that's odd. Oh, I wonder where that lot came from. Here, number one old seabed. There's a lot of rubber tubing wrapped round the propellers. Any idea where it could have... Yeah. <clears throat> oh, don't bother. It's my airline. It's a mess. Uh, don't start the engines up again, for pity's sake. Manners, Captain, manners. <laughs> that wasn't me, old bicarbonate. <laughs> Sir, it must have been Mount Nut doing its pot. Uh, I mean, um, the, the volcano's gone potty. Oh, yes. Dead on time, as usual. Any minute now, there will be the customary 25 year. There she blows. Yeah, well, there's no need to be so flaming cheerful about it. <laughs> well use fooling ourselves, I'm afraid. We're far too close to it for comfort. We certainly are. Well, it's been jolly nice knowing you, chaps. Uh, sorry, sorry about the props fa fouling. Uh, that's all right, old man. Wasn't your fault. <laughs> no, no. Wait a bit, Mount Popped. Wait a bit. Pert we needed to do by his dear old white-haired mother. <laughs> Take cover! Take cover! Take cover! That's it. All splendidly clear for 25 years. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, but, but do you mean to say that's all it does? <laughs> A very good one, wasn't it? <laughs> but good grief, man. Do you mean to say that we've been talked into ferrying the ambassador and his wife, the local mayor, and hundreds of battalion anders over to Grumble Islands just for that? <laughs> what the... Lazy? No, I mean, it, it's a flat Freddy being chased by Pitani landers in little canoe. Keep going, Akit! Keep going! Roar, girl! Roar! What on earth's happened? They must have rowed here from the Grumble Islands. Uh, quick, we must get uh, Sir Fred and his party a hand to get aboard. Oh, hi there! Uh, keep the blighters off, they've turned nasty on us. Uh, this way, sir. Uh, left hand down a bit. Uh, uh, 
Oh, sorry, ladies, it should have been right hand up a bit. <laughs> no, it's funny that. Don't matter what boat Mr. Phillips tries to navigate, it always hits something. This time it was us. Well, give us a hand up, some of you. After you, love. Oh, thank you, love. Oh, that was lovely rowing, Ackett. Lovely rowing. Thank you, my lady. But you had to stop waving your little flag, but it can't be helped, I suppose. What on earth happened, sir? What happened? What happened? You ask that daft Charlie of an electrical officer of yours. It was his fault. My fault, sir? Yes. You and your ideas about harnessing electricity. You know what you did, don't you? You left your wires lying about all over the beach. Yes, hello, hello. Anyone up there, old boat hooks? <laughs> wires? You, you, you mean cables? Ah, oh, that's right. Uh, turn the air pump down a bit, can't you? I uh, can't breathe the stuff fast enough. Uh, thanks to you and your... <laughs> Thanks to you and your experiments, every time there were a flash of light. Which were about every few seconds. Yeah, well, all, all the Patani landers and the Grumble Islanders got dozens and dozens of volts through the Tootsies. Yeah, uh, uh, turn the air off somebody. Up in up and down they were, like anything. I thought it was a local dance at first, I did. Mr. Bates, of all the bungling, oh, stupid, left-handed, yes. dangerous, quick... I know, I know. Oh, I, I do apologise. I, I completely forgot to disconnect the cables from the conductor on the radar cone. Yeah, well, hurry up and switch that air pump off, can't you, chaps? My shoot's getting bigger. Oh, I'm Batesy, old man. Better luck next time. If at first you don't succeed, uh, put him for another draft or something. Uh, well, if he's wise, he won't try next time. That nope. lot out there have had all the hot foot they want. They've been pelting us with rotten coconuts all the way. Yes, the sooner we get away, the better. Fortunately, the captain below is freeing our crop, so he shouldn't be... What was that? Oh, sounded like the air pump, sir. It must have been going full blast all the time. Blimey, look at the pressure gauge. And the captain's still down below and... and it... <laughs> Not any more, he isn't. He's popped up for a swim. Who oh, did that? Come on, hold up. Who did it? You all right, sir? What happened? What happened? You idiots left the air pump going flat out, old cloth here. I tried to tell you, but no, I'm only the captain. My diving suit got bigger and bigger and then bang! Stanton's in his wild and woolly vest. Well, don't mess about, sir. Swim for help. Where? The Patani landers are chucking red coconuts about. What? Coconuts? Where on earth is it? Ah. Ow! Oh, who did that? Good gracious, it's the boat race. Hey! Oh! 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 Oh, stop that, you found it! Oh, my George! Flying coconuts, I was right to the times about this. Drop it, drop it, oh, stop it at once. I prefer soft centers. And that was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Sir Frederick Flatley was Tanya Evans, Lady Alice Flatley was Heather Chasen, Hackett was Judy Cornwall, and the two Patani landers were played by Ronnie Barker and Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. <laughs> that menace of Portsmouth Command, the grim-faced Captain Povey, also known by the crew of Troutbridge as the Thing from Outer Gosport, he's, he's due for a pretty dodgy time himself. It's his wife, Ramona's birthday shortly, and he's forgotten it. Naturally, Mrs. Povey will remind him and everyone else in good time. Hello, is that you, Valentina? Yes, who's that? It's your dear sister, Ramona. In two weeks today, what am I getting? It's a surprise. Oh. Well, as long as it's not a jigsaw puzzle like last year, I don't mind. <laughs> What on earth possessed you to think I wanted 794 pieces of shunting time at Clapham Junction? I cannot imagine. 795 pieces, actually. Yes, well, next door's dog got in an eight one piece. <laughs> so I never did know the name of the locomotive on the upline from Hayward's Heath. Oh, uh, wait, there's someone at the door. Who is it? It's me, my love, Henry. Permission to open letterbox and peep? 
Hello, my love. And who's on the phone? Never you mind. I shan't be long, so stand there like a good boy. And if you want something to do, face the street and count the bricks in the house opposite. <laughs> Sharp letterbox. Very well, my love. Sorry about that, Valentina, dear. I'll have to ring off now. Little Hitler's back. <laughs> Has he been behaving himself lately? No, not bad, but we'll both have to crack down on him at the birthday party to make sure. Bye, Valentina. Bye, Ramona. 62, 63, 64, and a broken one. 65, and a broken one. 67. Permission to enter. And a broken one. Oh, thank you, my love. Uh, 68, and a broken... You can stop counting. Now, you know what today is? Uh, Tuesday, my love. Well done. Now, do you know what day it'll be in a fortnight's time? Now, think hard. Uh, another Tuesday, my love. Idiot. Now, I'll give you a little hint. da dee da da dee do da dee da da dee do da dee da da Ramona. da dee da da dee da Well? da dee da 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 Oh, got it. <laughs> You're entering an amateur talent contest. <laughs> Henry, well, just as I thought, you'd forgotten. Oh, no, 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 I hadn't, my love. No, splendid. Well, in that case, you've saved your pocket money for my present. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Well, <laughs> yes, this is a little, uh, well, I was just... Uh, yes, I knew it. You're skint. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you if I could have next Saturday's shilling in advance because... <laughs> Henry Povey, who have been frittering your alarms away again. Well, I take it you want a loan in order to buy me present. Oh, thank you, my love. I, I, uh, I suppose you couldn't make it... Two shillings, could you? It's a very expensive present. It had better be. Two shillings it is, and heaven help you if you spend it on some drunken orgy with your little friends. <laughs> now, time's getting on, so off you go and clear out your boiler. Oh, certainly, my love. And woe betide you, Henry Povey, if you drop your clinkers in the tradesman's entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm not, you know, I'm not happy. Neither am I, Fatso. A diabolical liberty, that's what it is. We're being put upon by the ruling classes. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that, but I'm not happy. <laughs> There's no denying it, I'm definitely not happy. If you've quite finished, Laurel Hardy. <laughs> no, we haven't, actually. You wait till we get home rule. The old bard love you for a belt up. Oh. But will you two cork up? Get on with these flaming stores inventories. Don't mean it won't take that long. Mind you, if we had the amount of gear we ought to have, it would take a flaming sight longer. <laughs> well, I don't see the point of it. No, you wouldn't. You didn't sign for everything in the first place. Now, look, any time now, the auditors will be carrying out an auditification of the old dockyard. And before they do, I want to know what's missing. So I've got time to work out an honest... Simple, straightforward, downright lie as to where it's flipping well gone. <laughs> Daddy, six dozen blankets. Right, wrong. <laughs> There's only five. What, dozen? No, just five. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I was forgetting, yet they were a very good line. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, sign here, Johnson. What for? 67 blankets. Oh, right, old chief. Can I borrow your ball pen? Yes, Good morning. Sir. Come back here. Come here. Next item. 250 water bottles. Oh, that's better. Well, come on, hurry up. Shouldn't take all day to count them. Who's counting? <laughs> We're still trying to find one. <laughs> well, where the blush red brick dust did they go, then? Well, to the best of my memory... For sale... An unlimited quantity... Of Natty Gent's brandy flask. No reasonable ah. offer refused. And it wasn't. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're right. That was another very good line. Yeah. <laughs> right, next. One gross monsoon kit. Ratings for the keeping dry of. Now don't bother, Taffy. I've counted it. One monsoon kit. <laughs> one? Yeah, one. And that's got an hole in it. An hole in it? Oh, that's going to be a fat lot of good next time we have a monsoon in Portsmouth, isn't it? 
Now, now, there you are, Chief. Uh, tell me, Thundercats. Uh, all right, relax. This is not an inspection. Oh, it's just as well, because half the stuff's missing. Don't talk! Don't talk, you great fat roly poly. Wondering if I could have a little word with you in, in private, Chief. It's, um... It's a personal matter. Oh, I should think so, sir. Yeah, with pleasure. Yes. Well, I'll be, uh, I'll be off then. I know when I'm not wanted. Yeah, well, then, uh, now that... Um... Uh, just a minute, sir. Hmm? Johnson. Uh, <laughs> Captain Povey wants a little word with me in private. Oh, ah. Uh, I'm listening. <laughs> in private. Well, what about it? There's only the three of us here. Exactly. There should only be two. Well, you better ask him to go then. <laughs> not him. You. I'm not very bright, really, am I? <laughs> no. So go. I'm gone. Good morning. Now, sir. Well, uh, this is rather a delicate matter, Chief. Yes, you see, uh, it's my wife Ramona's birthday soon, and I'm, well... Uh, well, that is, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, uh, uh, skint. Uh, skint. I, um, I did borrow a little extra, but I put it in the pocket of my other uniform, the one with the hole in the pocket, and my florin disappeared down a drain. I wondered if you knew of any way I might, uh, with dignity, of course, make a little extra money. Oh, well... There you have a bit of a problem, that, of course. Yes, I know. I've been worrying about it for days. Yes, I see. What can we think up here? Oh, now, how about a part-time job, sir? Hey? Oh, I could put in a word with the uh, manager of the local cinema, sir. He, he's been looking for a part-time usherette for some time. Usherette? <laughs> but I can't be an usherette. Well, in that case, what you want is a sideline in the daytime, then, sir. Well, something like that. Yeah. Yes, well, what can we think up for that? How about a little light washing up in the nappy at lunchtime, sir? I believe they play oh, a very Oh, really? Nice... I should have known better than to ask. I should, really. Well, why not start a nappy of your own, sir? What? Yeah, that's it, sir. That, look, I could have a word with my Uncle Ebenezer, sir, and he could arrange for you to get fags and, uh, and all that sort of thing wholesale, you see, sir. A natural salesman like you would do a roaring trade. Oh, right. Yes, I had. I must say, I've always thought I had the sort of personality that is required. Yes, but... well, you leave it to me, sir. I'll have a word with Nunky on the blower, sir, and you'll be in business by this afternoon. Morning, girls. Morning. Morning. Oh, that's what I like. A mad, enthusiastic welcome. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but we're terribly busy. Oh, anything for us? No. Why? Well, we're getting a bit concerned. Yet yeah, nobody seems to be speaking to us. Old Thunder Guts hasn't been anywhere near us for a week. Oh, well, it's nothing to do with you this time. Well, it must be something to do with the audit of the command, I suppose. Oh, well, I wouldn't know about that for sure. All we know is that we're having to type out bills all day long. Bills? D don't you mean signals? No, bills. From Henry Povey's Emporium. And in case you didn't know, his office desk is now known by most people as the little shop around the corner. <laughs> Lovey, he's not allowed to do that, surely. No, I can't believe this. Do you mean he's actually opened up a shop in his office? And outside it. At 12 o'clock, we have to take it in turns to go to the side window and sell the ices. Really? <laughs> really? Well, could I have a fork and a corn it, then, please? <laughs> uh, strawberry, if possible, but not... not Mr. Too... Phillips. Mm? Yes, sir? Mm? I wouldn't bother about a fork and a corn it if I were you. But Leslie's peckish. Possibly, but by the look of Heather, I'd say if you don't shut up, you won't get a corn it, you'll get a fork and one on the big bass drum. Oh, well, I mean, a wafer would do. Um... Mr. Phillips, what? stop waffling about wafers. I wasn't waffling about wafers. I... <laughs> I, I was whiffling about woofers. No, I mean, I mean, I was whiffling about what force. No, uh, I think I'll take a little rest. <laughs> Let somebody else have a tiny chat for a bit. Not before time. I suppose those Thunderguts must have embezzled some of their lordship's lolly, and this shop idea is a desperate move to replace the money before the auditors get here. I say, I never thought of that. Now, come to think of it, I don't know why I should sound so surprised. I never think of anything. <laughs> The question is, why should he have embezzled the money? Well, 
Well, it's Mrs. Purvey's birthday soon, you know. Of course. Oh, and we did know, actually. How? The ship's company got 18 postcards from her telling us this morning. <laughs> I think we'd better go in and see him, sir. Perhaps we might be able to find out how much he's swiped. Yes. Hmm? Now, I fully realize I'm wasting my time saying this, Mr. Phillips, but do try to be a little careful. Well, how do you mean, sir? Well, it might help if you didn't march straight into Captain Povey's office and ask him how much he's in for. <laughs> Happy shopping. Thanks. Open the door, Mr. Phillips. What? What? Come in, come in. Now, uh, what can I get for you this morning? Uh, we're doing a special line in... Uh, no, it's uh, you, number one. <laughs> what do you two want? Uh, two strawberry wafer. Um, um, <laughs> a fortney co... No. Uh, I, I, how much are you in for? Uh, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> uh, I mean, how, how much... Um, uh, how, 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 how much better your, uh, your, your looking, sir? Number one, what is he talking about? I don't know, sir. I think he just wanted to know how much your... Uh, uh, <laughs> how much truth there was in this rumor that you might be able to supply certain commodities. Oh, your customers. Oh, well, that's different now. What can I get for you? Well, everything's here in my desk. And, uh, cigarettes, perhaps? Uh, well, no, not just at the moment, sir. Uh, hmm? Excuse me, sir. And Mr. True Love is here. He's a traveler from Jimson, Harcourt, and Butterfield. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about this, gentlemen. <laughs> My wholesalers. This way, Mr. True Love. Oh, so kind. Oh, what a gay idea this is, Mr. Povey. Having all your assistants done up in fancy dress uniforms. <laughs> Very chic. We are not assistants. Well, floor walkers, then. Now, I've got something here which is the sort of line you've always dreamed of. Now, you've seen them on the telly, of course, but now they're actually in production. Nay, they're actually here in my car, and you'll be the first in the district to have them. They're most intriguing. Then what are they? Twinkie, twinkie, knack bars. <laughs> Do you mind? It took them six months to think up that name. Or they shouldn't have bothered. I, I don't think I really oh, need it. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. They're really thumping it at them on the telly now, you know. Well, you must have seen it. Twinkie, twinkie little bar. How I wonder what you are. Are you fruit or are you nut? Or yummy, yummy chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. And, and, and there's this handsome gift offer as well. They just saved 64 wrappers from Twinkie Twinkie Nut Bars, send them to the Twinkie Twinkie Home of Good Sweets, and by return, they receive an elastic-powered space rocket in pale pink plastic. Oh, and, very well done. And, and for 150 wrappers, you get the rocket's launching pad, in matching pale pink plastic as well, of course, and a signed photograph of Alma Cogan. <laughs> I should have thought after 150 Twinkie Twinkie bars, a tin of bicarbonate would be more acceptable. You know, you're not helping. Now, look here, I, I can't spend all day on this. They'll put me down for a few. Oh, good man. Now, here's another little winner. The new cigarette, Emperor-sized Lumberjacks for men. <laughs> Filter tips, of course. Oh, I've seen them on the telly, too, yes. That's the one where, where this chap takes this gorgeous, big, bumpy blonde miles and miles out into the country on a glorious day. <laughs> <laughs> and just when he, when he gets her alone in the woods, <laughs> the knit offers her a cigarette. <laughs> and then says, Lumberjacks, I'm all right. <laughs> I could wish some people wouldn't keep chipping in. Uh, yes, it might be better if we came back later. Come on, Mr. Phillips. No, hang on a moment, sir. I, I want a, a Twinkie Twinkie nut bar. Then I'll only need 63 more wrappers to get my pale pink lumberjack. <laughs> Out, Mr. Phillips. Out! <laughs> I'm not happy. I am not happy. I haven't been for quite a while now. I'm not happy. Overwork. That's what's doing it. Have you two quite finished? Yeah, I think so, Car. Well, I'm telling you that you haven't. You haven't even started yet. The flaming will get on with it. Right? Right. Six dozen blankets. Six dozen blankets. Right. Two hundred and fifty water bottles. Two hundred and fifty water bottles. Right. One cruise. 
Monsoon cakes. One gross monsoon cakes, right. That's one with a hole in it. <laughs> one gross. That's one with a nose. Lovely. I'm not happy, you know. For Pete's sake, why not? Well, I'm not... a moaning mountain of matter. I'm not happy because I don't know where all this stuff come from. Mm. Ten days ago, the cupboard was bare. Ten days ago, Fatty Hubbard, <laughs> Captain Povey hadn't got a shop. I've restocked the stores out of my commission on the proceeds, my son. <laughs> These blankets, water bottles and monsoon kits represent Johnsy's rake-off from the right load of twinkly-twinkly nut bones and a crate or two of empty lumberjacks for men. <laughs> oh, well, if you made enough to buy this lot, what's old Thunderguts made? <laughs> well, after deducting my perks and paying Uncle Ebenezer his little rake-off, we reckon he's copped about one and a tanner. <laughs> I bet he's not happy either. <laughs> he should be. He's got an office jam-packed full of stock. All he's sold up to now is 63 twinkly twinkly nut bars to Mr. Phillips. <laughs> morning, Chief. Good <laughs> morning, sir. That's his senior, sir. Chief, uh, this is a rather delicate matter. It concerns Captain Povey. Oh. Yeah, well, in that case, sir, I think I'd rather be left out of it. So we've got a lot of work Relax, to... Chief. I'm not concerned about the audit of your ship's stores. In some miraculous way, they always seem to be correct on the day. Now, for the other 364 days, there is the blooming thing in there. <laughs> Quiet. But on the audit day, there is. No, I'm concerned about Captain Povey's accounts. We have reason to... Um, Johnson... I'm listening, sir. <laughs> well, don't. Flatter off, the pair of you. Come on, Fatso. We're obviously in the way of their dark plotting. Of course, if I'd been a leading seaman, I'd probably have been allowed to stay, but as my promotion still hasn't come through... Uh, ghosty. Ghosty. Yes, Chief. Up it! We've gone, Chief. But we're not happy. <laughs> you were saying, sir? Well, not to put too fine a point on it, we have our suspicions that Captain Povey may have been borrowing from naval funds. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't know how, sir. <laughs> but that's the trouble. We don't think he's done it very well. Therefore, we wonder if, by any chance, one of your splendid relatives at Admiralty might be able to postpone the audit for a week or two. Now, well, sir, I mean, there is a certain relative of mine who can postpone the audit, sir, but, uh, well, unfortunately, he's already been asked to postpone it five times. For me. <laughs> now, I really should have thought of that. Oh, well, that's it, then. We shall just have to hope for the best. You know, if the audit branch at Admiralty do find out, they'll never believe old Thunderguts has been on the fiddle, either. Yeah, that's true enough, sir. <laughs> they'll probably think I must have got at his books. A oh, compassionate leave, sir. <laughs> uh, it's the dear old white head parent's 17th wedding anniversary, sir. No, Chief. Hey, just a minute. 17th wedding anniversary? Don't fight it, Mr. Phillips. We'll assume Mrs. Pertwee married twice. No, sorry, Chief. We'll just have to wait and see what Admiralty has to say about all this. Yes, yes, a rear admiral. Yes, a rear, yes, Admiral Andrich here. There's a Mr. Merrigal to see you, sir. He comes from Director of Naval Expenditures Office. Comes from it? No, no, uh, no. Uh, yes, uh, Medivale is the director. Yes, yes, the director, yes. By God, he's done well. Yes, send him in. Yes, well, um, over. And uh, yes, um, out. Yes, um, out. Good morning, Ironbridge. You shan't take up much of your time, but the branch is in the hole. My word, we are indeed, we are in the hole. Yes, yes. Ironbridge is the name, yes. Uh, do um, sit down, yes, do. It's this Portsmouth command audit, you see. Had to postpone it five times already, you know. Never quite cleared up why we did. Yes, yes, uh, do... Um... And now we're completely up a gum tree. That's where we are, all right. Yes, yes. Um, uh, try that one. It's interior sprung, you know. Yes, yes. It'll last a lifetime, they say. Yes, yes. Pretty pattern, too. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Oh, glad you like it. Yes. Uh, how about some tea? Well, there's only one thing to do. Scrub the audit this time and send a team down next time. Yes. Uh, no. We can trust old Purby as solid as a rock. My word, that's true. Solid as a rock. Uh, uh. Oh, is it? Oh, well, well I mean, uh, it shouldn't be. I mean, it's interior sprung. <laughs> uh, interior. 
Well, um, try the other one. Yes. Can't have you uncomfortable. Well, I must dash now, Anbridge. Up to our ears. Just wanted your approval. Uh, we'll cancel the audit, and that should give us a chance to catch up. No. Uh, yes. Uh, possibly. Uh, we needed the breather, all right. Oh, we needed that, all right. Good morning. Uh, yes. Uh, what? Oh, you're off, are you? Well, I'm glad to help. Yes, yes. Any time. Yes, yes. Must pull together. What? Yes, yes. Um. Oh, he's gone. Mabel! Huh? Who the blazes was that? Well, gentlemen, this is the Povey's place. I suppose we'd better go in. I, I still don't understand it, you know, sir. Fancy Mrs. Povey inviting us to her birthday party. Uh, well, it's probably a grand gesture, sir. I expect she's invited about 50 of her own friends and allowed old Thundergut to invite the three of us. Provided he pays for the lot. Mm, very probably. Well, at least buying Mrs. Povey's presents from him may have helped a bit. Yes, funny that the auditors haven't turned up yet, isn't it? I wonder just how much old Thunderguts is in for. We don't buy anything at the door. Oh, uh, too long. Right to our feet and enter. Thank you. Oh, happy birthday, Mrs. Furby. Granted. How many years is it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you must be at least... Uh, Chief. Uh, sir. Hit him, sir. This way and kindly see you walk on the newspaper. I don't want hoof marks all over my park here. Good evening, you three. What a relief you got here. What was that? You suggesting my friends aren't bags of fun. Oh, no, my love. They're the funniest bags. I... <laughs> I, I, I just meant I was glad that number one, Mr. Phillips and the chief, found their way all right. Oh. Well, good boy. Carry on. No. Who's for a drink? Drinks here? <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. But we'd be quiet. Come on now, bring up your cups with more of me homemade blackberry punch. Blackberry punch? <laughs> it's a horrible recipe. A great horn gothy gave me. Oh, how generous of her. <laughs> and that reminds me. Where are my presents? Oh, they're all here, my love. Uh, the big one is mine. Well, so I should think. Uh, by the way, as we're off duty, I may as well... <laughs> I may as well put your minds at rest about one thing, gentlemen. I, I've heard from Admiralty there is not going to be an audit this time. They're too busy. Oh, splendid. No audit. <laughs> All that lolly I spent on six dozen blankets, 250 water, water bottles. Never oh, mind, Chief. Now that you're straight, it gives you a flying start for the next one. Silence. Ramona's going to unwrap her presents now. Right. Fast one. That's mine. Just a little one. Creeping, Jenny, what is it? An elastic-powered space rocket in pale... <laughs> pale pink plastic. <laughs> and I never want to eat another Twinkie Twinkie nut bar. Is that what I do? Hmm. Well, I'll think about that later. Next. I think that's mine. I'm afraid. <laughs> what is it, my love? A hundred emprosized lumberjack cigarettes for men. <laughs> they don't do any lumber jills for women, I'm afraid. Huh. Next. Well, good old old's been a lovely. Wait. This must be yours. I recognize the funny shaped castle. <laughs> now then, what little novelty have you... Oh. Oh, very nice, but what would I be doing wearing a monsoon cape in Gotham? <laughs> no, 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 Mrs. P. So that, that's not a monsoon cape. No, I thought it would be jolly handy when you were out for a spin on your trike. You know, at the first pitter patter pitter patter of the rain, you whip that on, and there's an handy little learning it for you to hang on to your shopping basket. <laughs> Next. There's only mine left, my love. Right. Let's have a look. Henry Purvey, or off your rocker. <laughs> what on earth am I going to do with heaven knows how many twinkie, twinkie, not far? <laughs> well, I, I couldn't sell them. I mean, I, I thought you'd like sweets, my love. <laughs> sweet for the sweets, you know. 
Don't be disgusting. <laughs> ah, but once you've eaten 150, you can get a launching pad for my plastic-powered pink... <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean, don't you? Mm. Elastic-powered pink plastic rocket. Your potty. A lot of your... Oh, no, they're all advertised on the telly. What was that? Henry Povey. Who said you could watch the telly? <laughs> I haven't, my love. No, no, no. There, there was this commercial traveller, you see. Young man, if that is the start of a rather dodgy story, you can hop it now. No, no it isn't, my love. This traveller called at my shop. Shop? What shop? Uh, the one where we bought all those presents to stop Captain Povey going to jail. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we didn't know how much he was in for you. Uh, Mr. Phillips said, I don't think you're helping. Oh, I'm quite sure he isn't. But look, my lover, I could explain. Well, whether you can or you can't, you're something worth going to. Valentino, lock up the Blackberry Punch. And we commence. Well, it all started when I lost my two-shilling piece. Huh. Betting on the Gigi's, I suppose. No, 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 no. Down a drain hole. It fell out of my pocket and went diddle diddle chink chink down the path. A likely story. Oh, my dear mother was so right. She said you were a gambling man. No, oh, I'll soon have you tame, my lad. Into the kitchen and start with the washing up. And this time there'll be no malarkey with your little mop round my sink tidy. Off you go. <laughs> And that was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Mrs. Povey was Heather Chasen, Judy was Judy Cornwell, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Taffy Goldstein was Tenny Elevens, and Rear Admiral Ironbridge was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. (laughs) 